Yeah! Woo! <laughs> Hello, everybody. Welcome to Five Aside episode 43. Today, you are joined by. What's up? What's up? Seb? Kendrick. Gabe? Josh. Yes, sir. We're here for another episode, getting very close to number 50 on y'all. Uh, a lot of different topics to talk about today. We've got the Ballon d'Or Award merging with UEFA Best Player of the Year Award. We've got the Copa Libertadores with some history being made. Mm. Got a lot going on in women's footy. Always some good um, question of the week. Would you rather? All those sort of things. And so speaking of question of the week, my question for y'all is a very, very powerful one. Mm. We talk a lot about script writers in sports. So my mm. question for y'all is if you were the football script writer and you could write one thing into it to have it happen, what would it be? Question for this question. Please. Always. Can we go back? Yeah. Fuck. Can we go back and change Or is change something? I'll allow that as well. Okay, fair. Sorry. If we're going to change something. What we changing, bro? Oh, <laughs> we know. I already know what it is. Nah. nah, nah. It's not that? Nah, it's not. Okay. But we're going to give R9. I, I like that we know what that is, though. Trust me. <laughs> nah, we're going to give R9 better knees. Mm -hmm. I like that. Bro. Why? Because his potential, go. like, it was, what, 70% of his potential maybe reached? The type of stuff he had to go through to even compete in the World Cup for Brazil. They said, well, they had to shock him one night before, all that type of stuff. Like, he's somebody that everybody loves, but it was it was sad to see our injuries. And that's okay narrative in that side of the country. I mean, that side of the, the world. Sorry, the country that he comes from. You know what I mean? Some people think he is the GOAT. Like, period. And Still, just in terms of peak quality on the pitch yeah. at a certain given moment. Obviously, career accolades, there's no comparison between the other Ronaldo and Messi. <laughs> yeah. But just peak. And obviously, we didn't get to watch him the same way. Yeah. But I've seen some older people still say, I've never seen anything like R9. Yeah. The way he was moving for how players move back then was kind of crazy. <laughs> yeah. Um, <laughs> reminds me a bit of Mbappe and style. But yeah, I'll give R9 knees, bro. I like that. That's a really good one. Kendrick, sub? Um, I can go. Um, I think we have two because you just inspired me yeah. um, in terms of changing the past. Um, we've spoken on this podcast a lot about like mental health and how mental health has become a very important part of the game. Mm -hmm. um, and so I think the thing that I would go back in time and change in regards to how football, um, in regards to how football kind of treated mental health, um, speaking of Brazilian players, Brazilian strikers, Adriano mm. was someone who dealt with a lot of mental health issues during yeah. a time in which mental health was not really understood properly within sports. Yeah. Um, and so similar to R9, a player that was always spoken about as like, yo, I've never seen anyone do anything like this. Never seen anyone play anywhere near to his level. But, you know, the stories are the stories. Everyone understands that like when his father passed away, there was just like nothing anyone could do to help him because I don't think that mental health in sports was like properly understood at the time. So mm -hmm. I think Even I would- in society. Yeah, yeah, and in society. So I think I'd maybe change that because I think that guy could have done so much. Um, but I know he's good now. At least he he says he is. So that's the first thing. I think the, in terms of scripts, I think the thing that I would change in terms of narratives and scripts in football is I would make it so that, you know, especially in terms of like fan bases and international soccer, I would make it so that the British never won a World Cup. And I say that because I think it would just make soccer a lot less annoying during international periods. You're not wrong. Bro. Because if the British, if you take away their World Cup, they have no international trophies. Literally. And it makes it just so much more calmer during these periods of time because the whole it's coming mean, home, bro? this, that, the third is just irrelevant. I will say, because well, mine is going to loosely relate in a way, but the commentary they have and the feeling of the ownership of the sport, I think if you take away the star off the chest, yeah. it decreases even more. Yeah. Because they've already lost, like, the ownership of the sport. That yeah. some, not, not all British fans, that some British fans try to ha have for inventing the sport, that that sort of thing. If y'all don't win the World Cup, you can't say nothing. Because they don't even have a Euro. I didn't, They don't. I, they almost did. I wasn't. <laughs> I wish. Uh, I knew that. Blackies messed it up. <laughs> I knew they didn't have a Euro. We'll cut that out, Black. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> I knew they didn't have a Euro. They did. No, they did. They did. <laughs> nah, man. Donnarum was just a great keeper, man. He's actually really not. I know. He's kind of normal. <laughs> Which makes it worse. But yeah, if, if you yeah. take away that if you take away that star, I think football all like I think it, it does a favor to the rest of football if the British have less on their chest to speak about. Yourself? I rock with it. Um it's <laughs> like, funny, bro. What? It's funny too, because they, they beat him too. Like what? Italy beat them and he still wants them and didn't have nothing. No, I, I fuck I, with I it. I don't know. I don't know where <laughs> Do you know how annoying that week was I leading up yeah, to of the course. game? Nah, oh, niggas don't fuck God. with England and Europe. Of course. As like, you know. It's coming home. I hear, bro. You did the big annoying. one. You did the big one. You you shut them out. It's coming home. What else home? do you have to do after you shut them out? 
this. You want to shut them again? Forever. Okay. okay, yeah. okay. Do you know how arrogant it's coming home S- is? Seth was like, it's coming Rome. I saw all those posts, bro. <laughs> it's coming Rome. I never said that. That was disgusting. Yeah. It's oh. better than it's coming home. And it did go to Rome, so. Yeah, it did. <laughs> huh? I said, and it, it did go to Rome, to be fair. It did go so. to Rome. <laughs> With one of our worst teams ever. Yo, definitely. How <laughs> did Italy win the fucking Euros? Yeah, anyway. That's my Gabe Spirits. How the fuck you win? How'd you beat Spain? Yeah, talking, yeah, bro. talking about this again, if we could change something in the script, I have Saka, Sancho, and Rashford bang all the time. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> bro, if I could and the racism. Bro, you know what I'm saying? All his team. Like, <laughs> oh, for some, yeah. It would have been nice. That's a good one. Bro, <laughs> United <laughs> boys. <laughs> oh, what? Rashford yeah, it was be... two of y'all boys. Fuck. I don't even want it. Rashford would be going crazy right now. Saka would be going yeah, crazy. That well, Rashford that, is good. That, Sancho that would, would be would changing. Never end up in the that would have changed bro. the history of football. Actually. Everything. Yeah, bro. Every, it would have been interesting. We would have been up. We would have been up. We would have been up. would have been Be a black prime minister after that. You like, sure. damn. Sure. That's fucked up. Majority uh, black population. Sure. Definitely. Bro, sure. They would have done better. They're not ready for that one. They would have done better in the World Cup, too. Absolutely. Probably. Yeah, you move with a different type of sauce. You know which team didn't go in the World Cup? What do you mean, didn't go? Like, didn't make it into the World Cup. Oh, Italy. Oh, I, I'm cool with that. Back to we back Euro. is crazy, but yeah. It's kind of gross. <laughs> back to back is really nasty. <laughs> you, North Macedonia, bro? Chill, bro. It's okay, Sick. bro. But you even, got four. You got four. You got four. I don't even know where that is. You got four. <laughs> we do have four. You have four. It's pretty nice. Where is Macedonia? It's above Greece. I was about to say it's in that area. Shout out, uh, you know. Population 1,000 people. <laughs> Population international team. Yeah, literally. It's just yeah. them. Yeah. yeah. Um, if I were to change the script, I would have two as well. One, I would make sure that Hazard never went to Real Madrid. <laughs> yeah. Same. Yeah. <laughs> nah. Like, no, where, would where would you send him? Where would you send him? Oh, I would have. Bro, he's a Chelsea Wait. fan. The fuck, nigga. <laughs> actually, win a Champions League with us. Mm. Um, and just you know continue going crazy. Mm. And the other one is more recent, but um, I would have Lukaku actually like score that header in the Champions mm. League final last mm. year. Tied it up. In City, tied up, and then. Hopefully, like, into it, go on to win it. But it would just change, like, Lukaku's career, bro. Like, imagine he That was the that day. Career. That was the night. And, and, and he yeah. scored another one or they went on to win yeah, yeah, yeah. in extra time or whatever. Like, that would have changed everything. Make the Stallion would have still been with him. She wouldn't have sure. been rapping about him. He wouldn't him. have gotten shipped off to... Uh, you Rome. heard her last oh. verse? The Cobra thing, right? I saw the shoot of the video though, and I was like, I can't watch <laughs> I wasn't, I wasn't. <laughs> I wasn't talking about it. You were talking about the video. Yeah. <laughs> Hey, shout out, shout out, Mike the Stallion, man. Doing your thing. She got a lot off her chest in that Lukaku. video. Um, yeah. He scored a goal today, though. He's been doing well. Nice. Yeah. Shout out, Roma. He scored a, he scored a 96 minute winning goal. Yo, what's on the Roma shield? Is that a kid under a cow? A rhino? Suckling. Do you want to tell you a story? Yeah, this is great. So, so when Rome was found, fa- the, the legend is that when Rome was founded, you know, before the time of the ancient Romans, whatever, um, a wolf. Found yeah. a pair of twins by the river yeah. Tiber, fucking weak. And it's true. Um, it's true. And um, the twins are Romulus and Remus, and so these are the two right. twins. That's why Rome is named that that's name. Why Rome oh. is named, bro. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, past, I'm trying to think, because to be fair, I've had things work out for my my teams, but. I for don't. the future, fuck me. No, bro. no, but this is what has not worked out. This is what has not worked out. What I would change or what I would make happen? It can't be fun. I don't it's believe it's fun being a Real Madrid fan. Oh, it's mad fun. I promise. You. I don't believe. I promise you that. I promise you. I'm also a Knicks fan, so it's like, same. Yeah, maybe, maybe that. If I was like a Lakers fan and Real Madrid right. and like, yeah, that was, yeah. as being a Madrid fan, like if you there was a lot of lows Madrid. when I when I first started so the team. The, they yeah, we man. weren't we weren't winning the league like that. There was a point yeah. time yeah, Barca was bro. Actually, Madrid wasn't advancing out of the round of sixteen till Mourinho came. Let me like let me ten straight. Let me, seasons. Explain, let me explain what lows really are. Oh lows, yeah, oh lows, no, yeah, mean, y'all know some lows, lows mean like fifteenth place. That's a low. <laughs> well, even like seventh is pretty low. No, it's no. not. It's not. It was when it, I mean, but no, it's United's had lows, bro. They haven't. It's no, United. He knows lows. Yeah, but they weren't fifteenth place. No, they don't no, have no. to be fifteenth. No, place. lows is like like everyone in the country is making fun of your team. Like that's what's happening. that happens to, to the Kings though too. No, when you so, fall and you make a mistake or the way yeah, y'all never falling like that. In no, no, course. of course, bro. I'm just saying when I joined, like it took me. He's he's 2006. Like yeah, he's gaslighting. I know. You. No, but I'm trying to say though is I started watching 2006. We didn't win the Champions League 2014. 
I've never seen my team win the Champions League. <laughs> right, right. Okay. No, I'll, no. <laughs> I'm not saying. Wait, sorry, wait, wait. I'm not saying like feel bad for Real Madrid fan. I'm saying it is fun because I had to see the progression to that. The Ronaldo transfer, That's Mourinho right. coming, a hundred points, not, yeah. penalty misses. I wish banged. I, could. I saw that. Now, now, if I joined in 2014, right. it's right. very different. Yeah. I wish I could put you in my brain so you could experience right. what it means to watch yeah. AC Milan have a goalkeeper. No, I can't relate. Really, cannot relate. Yeah, so can't relate. The way you just backed yourself just proved this point more. Yeah. A little bit. No, but my, my point is to the having fun. It's fun. But can I complain? Fuck no, nigga. That's why if we don't win, I'm like, okay. With but it. it's missing a little bit of like the beauty of the sport. Like The Knicks know, give yeah, me I'm enough. Not, no? I'm not going to lie. Because I, I, I was thinking about this a lot. Because my little brother is a Manchester City fan. Right. And it's mm. actually just like every time he watches, you know they're going to win. Yeah. That's but it. you don't know, bro. That's, no, like when you when watch I, City in the Prem, bro. There's no nerve. You're not really time nervous, you watch, bro. We just tied right over today. It's just like, all right, let me see how many goals we score today. No, it's, it's not that simple. Because like I won't lie, like even United and like you know people will say the United um, franchise is kind of like the Laker franchise, yeah. In terms of like the '90s and the yep. 2000s, yeah. When you take us outside the Prem, we had teams to compete with, yeah. You know. But okay. like with Real Madrid, he's basically saying that like the lowest to win fourteen, relative. yeah. yeah. It's so relative. for instance, yeah, a Real yeah. Madrid hurting was that time when Barca was spanking us. Yeah, yeah. It's actually Barca. Yeah. So it was just like, and I was introduced to that. Even then, like, but can I ask you a question? What, twice a year, like you More. know the feeling. Oh. You know the it feeling that you have in... when the league past them. Like, yeah, the feeling that you have when you watch Spain play internationally is different. It's like you're a little yeah. nervous. Like you don't know what the fuck is gonna happen. Right. Like true, anything could. happen. I mean, I was kind of blessed with that because after the 2006 World. Cup. Yeah, I saw them the, the next world. three True. trophies for six years, bro. I'm a Knicks fan, dog. Like, yeah, but, but now Spain different. is different because you know there's no guarantees. You know what it is? It's Perez. Yeah, that's special. What it, that's yeah. what it is. Okay. But it's still fun. Special Proper guy. Corrupt. Talking Both. about Perez. Talking about corrupt. Balandoa. Talking about UEFA. Oh, I didn't even get to answer my thing. Though. Yeah, please. Yeah. So the one thing that I would write into the script. <laughs> I didn't even get to do. I'm crying. Um, <laughs> you can see. The one thing that I would write into the script, very simply, is have the USA win the World Cup. Oh, that's gross. Bro. Which 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 World Cup? Oh, into that 2026? Yes. Yeah, that's fair. That's I fair. don't want to see that. I will say. What is going on on this podcast? <laughs> no, that's fair. We are the worst spoke persons ever. No, no, no. We should do that segment again. <laughs> Y'all are sick, bro. 2026, <laughs> USA win the World Cup. Hopefully, it'll be a time for the football culture to grow in the US. Yes. Yeah. That, bro, if we win the World Cup, if we were to win the World Cup, Forget 2026, but especially 2026, Man, like that would stand it's up. actually over for everyone. I'd rather we lose in the final. I hope you understand. It's That'll diff- still be it's incredible. Difficult. It's difficult because it's like obviously you want the you want the home team to win, yeah. but you could also just imagine Americans being boastful about something that's so like worldwide. You know. So how? About, but that's how winning the World Cup is. Bro. So how about yeah, reception? Like it should be, but like um, imagine Americans on that time. Um, we need to build like more. We Billy, need to build like the, more cultures. Like Billy so I'm Bob, okay with that. The Billy Bob from Idaho. Talking about like shut up, Billy Bob. The Billy Bob from all these other countries are doing the same thing, bro. That's right, that's we right. just know our own Billy Bob. You know what I'm saying? Like, <laughs> nah, there's Seb Billy Bob in the though. countries of Spain, Italy, I'm Germany, all that, bro. Nah, he said we should lose in the final. <laughs> Yo, why would I? Yeah, I'm trying to write the script, nigga. I hear it. I hear it. No, 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 no. In terms of, okay. really no, in, ter- in terms of like building the culture, because like I won't lie, depending who wins it, especially if it's a football powerhouse yeah. historically. It'll be a moment that people will learn who's the opponent. There's anticipation. We yeah. might we might win it. And if it's a closed match, that could also be like, damn, like we're up there. Yeah. It would fade out in a different way. But like you said, if we win it too, it's like we all winning. know as people in the football media space that this culture is growing. It's not stamped yet. Yeah. yeah. Winning's bigger though than losing in the final. hundred hundred percent. Yeah. Objectively. Of course. Anyways, I, if I were to write the script, I'd have the USA win the World Cup, <laughs> especially 2026. And it's a wrap for the world after that. It's a wrap. One Sorry. last thing, actually, I just thought of to answer your question. I would um right rewrite. Yeah, I would um have Croatia miss that goal in the last World Cup. Actually, after Neymar scored the just oh, win one nil, yeah, yeah. Yeah, 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 they just would have won. The ref would have called. Oh, time. that was when I was gonna do for the past was gonna have. It was about Neymar. I like Neymar winning a World Cup, but I would also would have liked him to win the Champions League with Paris. I would have liked him to be able to lift Bob that Bob, Champions no, League trophy. Why? No, PSG I w- no have a trophy. Bro. What? PSG deserves a Champions League trophy. Neymar deserves Neymar to stand does. on his own and two feet, and ten toes down, finished. with his finished, own bro. Champions League trophy without Messi just yeah, to show that, that he is that city, bro. Not we'll talk city. a lot different about him if they beat Bayern in that final. I promise you, it we'll was, talk different about him. It was Neymar. during the bubble. The bubble. Yeah. Um, yeah. The, Whether it was that year or one of the previous years, but like if he had won the Champions League with Paris, that would have been so good. That bro. team, that Bayern team was different though. 
That PSG but they, team was they beat different. them the next year in the yeah. um, Champions League knockout stage, bro. Still. I know, but it's like, bro. Talking about corrupt. Talking about UEFA. Yes, sir. What's going on with the Ballon d'Or, man? Oh. No, go ahead. Please, bro. No, I just remembered a good topic for later. Okay, but, <laughs> but yeah, speaking of UEFA and the corruption, Josh, uh, UEFA will now co-host the Ballon d'Or ceremony with France football, yes. which will be putting an end to the current UEFA Player of the Year awards that they've been giving out. Um, I just think the timing is very interesting mm. because I feel like UEFA feels like maybe they lost. And obviously, we know these negotiations had been going on for years to make it this mm. official. Sure. Um, but it's, it's just an interesting time because they kind of lost control of the award by going to an MLS player, which is a fact, by the way. Like, an MLS player just won the Ballon d'Or. Um, and for Holland to win the Champions League, mm-hmm. absolutely dominate that competition, win the treble, mm-hmm. and get the UEFA Men's Player of the Year award go to him, and then that just get kind of toppled over by the Ballon d'Or. Mm-hmm. I think UEFA being part of that is going to kind of have give them the ability to put their stamp a bit more back on that award Mm. because they're from their perspective too the world cup doesn't even count into the UEFA player of the year award so i think it's um just a way of them getting getting their bite back i told people because it's kind of a smack in the face to uefa for holland not to win the ballon d'or wasn't that was it maradona's (laughs) birthday or something it was too messi was (laughs) holland it was on maradona's birthday yeah what's going on anybody else we'll see though because those awards have been separated at different points yeah What's the point? I don't understand why they would do that. Like, bring them together. Why are they putting? Why are they bringing them together? Like the Ballon d'Or is supposed to like also incorporate international soccer. It's supposed to. So now, when you bring UEFA in, I feel like it's just it's just the UEFA award. They also think it's gonna rival FIFA's the best awards. No one gives which, a fuck about the best facts. Awards. Historically yeah. speaking, there's no need to rival it. It's, like, it's really interesting. It's like a fits. Yeah. yeah. Like, people, a fits one. <laughs> bro, people go yeah. follow that comp- that award ceremony for yeah, the outfit. Oh, yeah. Like, yeah. Actually, it's like the the Met Gala. Yeah. 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 Like, we're, we're going to be at the best next year. Yeah, we should be. Yeah, a lot is so. changing. What? We should be at the ESPYs this year, to be honest. <laughs> Facts. That's actually very tangible, to be honest. The ESPYs? Tell them. Yeah. <laughs> manifest it? I think I want to manifest yeah. that. Tell them. We have the ESPYs. A lot's changed with you, um, for the, bro. Conference yeah. League and shit. Conference League. They're changing the structure next year for the Champions League. So this is actually the last season the Champions League is going to have this current group stage format. Just a lot going on with UEFA and uh, the whole organization. So how much do you care as a player about the Ballon d'Or? Like, I'm asking you how to put yourselves in, like, a player's shoes. Depends who you are. Yeah. Definitely. Jude, does. right? What, so walk me through the psychology of, of a player that gives a fuck about the Ballon d'Or. Man, and what's... Funny, I don't understand. The reason I, I say it depends yeah. is Jude, right? He started this season incredible. He's maybe putting himself as, just as of now, what, one-fifth of the way through the season as a front runner. Mm-hmm. But he's like, bro, I'm just trying to be on my new team. I want to win, whatever. It's kind of different. Right. Ronaldo, Messi, peak when they're in their third and fourth. Bro, I want that shit again. I want to win the Champions League. I want to win La Liga. I want to win everything. I want to score yeah. 50 goals. Like, yeah. I'm just, that's just like a kid. I want it, bro. No, no, no. So I'm so saying could, those two mentalities just, are going to be different. You, But you brought up like uh, tangible, real, live, like things that matter within the game. Yeah. I want to score this amount of goals. I want to win this amount of trophies. I right. want to do this amount of like assists, whatever, whatever, yeah, yeah, whatever. Yeah. The trophy itself, why do you care about being on that stage what's, specifically? What's Does that make sense? People want... Oh, go ahead. No, what's the difference between having a Ballon d'Or trophy and having a Champions League trophy to you? Just so I can understand... Well, so the is. Champions League trophy, I feel like, is, is objective? a direct correlation yeah. of what I did on the on in that tournament. I won the tournament against other teams, whereas the Ballon d'Or is an individual trophy. Well, people want to be recognized as the best. Why do people care about MVP awards across all sorts I've of I've never sports? really understood it, to be honest. I think I mean, it's I think it's really like you if, want, you, if you're constantly delivering at the highest level like in the world like you said the, the Ronaldo's the Messi mm-hmm. it's kind of like and you've already won the Champions League you won league titles you won X Y Z right it's like that's the that's the last thing you want and you want to you want to be memorialized mm. if you get a Ballon d'Or you're memorialized like nobody can Amen. say nothing to you sure. yeah you know what I mean think about your last man bro Kaká mm-hmm. you know and like. I think one thing too, you brought up the fact that your like time in your life where you really enjoy football is like thirteen. Yeah. Imagine that, like I think Bale made a quote about how like when you're playing, that joy rides until a certain point, and then obviously it's business and all that type of stuff. Yep. Yep. But the Bondor is the could be the goal for somebody. I didn't mean to cut you off though, but like it's the goal for somebody. Memorialization, bro. If you bring the Ballon back home, 
and think about what it Some means. Some people, you only need one. Like, yeah, we've but, lived in very, in terms of like sports in general, bro. To have Ronaldo, Messi, and other sports like LeBron, LeBron, Tom Brady, the longevity. I'm not gonna lie, like <laughs> I'm, just, you, I'm looking forward to the peaks and the ebbs and the flows of like one, two year because you yeah. get one. Dino has one. You know, yeah. and like one thing you bring up is the fact that like people who don't hold that, like, or you didn't bring up, but I thought about mm -hmm. people who don't hold that, do they still feel that sense of pride? Yeah. Cause like they should have hold yeah. a Ballon d'Or. And like, I think too, it's there's like, so many Ballon, like there are MVP level players in the NBA that have never won it. Of course. Which is there what are. makes it more special. Yeah. Or yeah. less. I are you, so your, your, your question yeah. is purely from their mindset? Yeah. People want to be recognized as the best. I put everything I have. I won these trophies. I did X, Y, and Z. I want the official title, pretty much, that I am the best. Yeah. They want it stamped. Yeah. No debate. Yeah. I have the award, right? Because people in the GOAT debate are going to say the Ballon d'Ors, comparing Ronaldo and Messi, even though it could be more about goals, assists, trophies, whatever. They're going to talk about Ballon d'Ors. It's what, 8 to 5 now? Yeah. Right? 8 to 5? Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. So, but speaking of that as well, Joshua, you mentioned is that the peaks and valleys of careers. I'm very interested in the next decade. How many Ballon d'Or winners do you think we'll have? I Different hope, Ballon d'Or winners. I, I could see spread. three or four, bro. I hope it's very I really spread. in the next. I could 10 easily years, see. I, mean, I could see Jude, Killian, Erling. I'd have to think about some other names, but Vinny? I could see at least Vinny could get one. Like the next ten Ballon d'Ors, I don't think is going to only go to like two guys. I, I think no way. I hope not. I think it's going to be a lot more up and downs. It's going to be a lot more. It's real. You don't know who's going to win it. Yeah, I think it's going to even out in an exciting way. Honestly, that's how it should be. Yeah, like we've had that was not normal, bro. <laughs> we have some robots in mass sports. Like, yeah, come on, son. LeBron What's... going to the finals ten years straight. Yeah, I think it's crazy. What? what? Is that? Do you know how many games that is? You see how he's dunking at 38? Stop. This is weird, bro. It's weird. It's weird. Yeah. It's weird. <laughs> yeah, it's like... Technology, bro. Yeah, yeah nah, nah, technology. Nah, nah sure, sure. It is. Fitness and all that. You got all, all different... You got levels of technology. People shocking your muscles to revive. Nah, that's true. Nah, that's a fact. Dedicating Micros, their lives. Micro surgeries yeah. and whatnot on your body. Hmm. He spends millions in Putting investing in his body. your fibers back together in your legs. Trust me, bro. Shout out medicine, bro. <laughs> Millions of his body. No, literally. Oh, like through all the training, the, the everything, bro. Millions. But yeah. it's worth a billion to him, so. It's basically like a weekly BBL. <laughs> <laughs> nah. I mean, you put it that way. <laughs> and that <laughs> is how we end that segment. A weekly BBL. That's a crazy BBL, bro. Weekly is hey, nuts. BBL on his, <laughs> his calves. Supposedly bro. Kobe, like... Got new blood in his legs, like after every season. <laughs> I was here for something else. Too. From who? It's a question. <laughs> so definitely from who, nigga? From, like, question. from a black I mamba, just... like it put snake blood. I don't in know. Know. Say something cruel. <laughs> uh, I don't know. Definitely. Which leg blood was the, getting shot up in the, <laughs> the BBL to Kobe combo had me nervous for a second, but you did well for sure. Wow. <sighs> Rest in peace to Kobe. Yeah, RIP. But Amen. we were just speaking about Messi, you know, so keeping it with South America. Mm. It was just the final of the Copa Libertadores, 2-1 to Fluminense from Brazil, yep. where uh, Marcelo plays and they won their first ever Copa Libertadores. Uh, Seb, you got the kit on today. I think you watched the match as well. You Body always give line, good bro. You always give, give good vibes about like these crazy environments if you, you want to kind of describe it. Give us the but vibes, was bro. fun. Yeah. Um, not only did I watch the game, but I was kind of following like the buildup on social media as well. Apparently, there were 10,000 Boca Juniors fans that made their way up to, to Rio to watch the match. Um, 10,000 of, of people doing anything is a lot. But 10,000 <laughs> Boca Juniors fans is a little nuts. Um, so there was this video that came out. We'll put it on the screen right here. But there's this kid. He was, like, screaming. There was, there was like, Argentinian um, media doing, like, interviews with the fans, like, outside the stadium. <laughs> And this kid's like, yo, we sold our PlayStation, we sold our house, we sold our sister, we got tickets, we don't even have tickets to the game. The kid was screaming, just bing like bong. listing things that he <laughs> definitely yo, been. That's Argentinian bing bong, bro. Bing bong, bing bong sure. fuck your life. <laughs> but he ends, he ends the clip by saying, and we couldn't even afford to get tickets, but we're just out here in the stadium. That's crazy. And this little kid just like, and his dad is there, like, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Anyway, so I don't know. The, the game was amazing. Um, three amazing goals. Um, yeah. Atmosphere was crazy. Uh, Fluminense goes up. Boca ties it up late, seventy seventh minute, and then an insane rocket for Fluminense to win. Um, and I just think like I'm I'm glad that there was coverage of the game globally that game 
But honestly, as a fan, like I'm, I'm disappointed in myself first and foremost because I feel like I should have been following more. Because if that was the final, what were the other games like? Yeah, like that shit must have been insane. Um, they said uh, one of the Fluminese Fluminese player John Kennedy was sent off for jumping in the in the crowd to celebrate. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yep. And then Boca Juniors Frank Fabra so the game ended got with a red card players. for slapping yeah. a play. Yeah, so both teams had ten players. But yeah. Yeah. I respect it. It was it was nuts. It was nuts. But like, that's just how football. Should be. Those are how those tournaments. He slapped him for real. Yes, bro. And I was just thinking in my head, like, yo, the past Champions League finals have been awful, like Facts. awful. I have not really enjoyed Champions League finals for the past three, four years. I mean, bro, that what was that Tottenham? That was the worst one ever. Tottenham Liverpool. Was Tottenham the Liverpool. Thank that was you. the worst one. That Tottenham Liverpool game, <laughs> twenty nineteen. Well, it yeah. was like I had a watch party at my house. Thirteen, fourteen, fifteen people came over. Bro, we st- We just played ping pong outside during the second half. It was like ridiculously bad. Nah, it was the worst. And then that type of Champions League final, you know, what the norm has been for those games in comparison to that game. I'm so glad I watched it. Honestly, one of the better games of football I've watched. It this in terms of like finals with Argentinian teams, that World Cup final was up there. And that final with Boca and Fluminense was certainly up there as well. That was not a, a slap, bro. Like he touched on face. <laughs> he touched his face, but like, come on, bro. That's how it be though. He touched his face. Yeah, he was like, <clears throat> bro. And then just a little context for viewers too. If you don't know, this is um, maybe you're getting, you know, because we got some fans that are new to the sport. Um, this is essentially the South American Champions League. Yes. So we got teams from all over South America. The final coming down to an Argentinian and Brazilian team is pretty much as bitter as that can get. Yep. Um, and yeah, the Brazilians got it yep. this time, bro. And <laughs> a really interesting quote from Marcelo. Brasil. He said that this was uh, the most important trophy he's ever won. And he's he won like, five yeah. UCLs. Yeah. yeah. And he said, he was like, you know, I, I know Real Madrid fans will understand, I understand. when I say what? this because yeah. this is my boyhood club, this is the club that I grew up with. But this trophy, this trophy right here, is the best one for me. And speaking of that trophy, um, I think it was Gabi Go I saw on Twitter, um, was pointing to his tattoo of the Copa Libertadores trophy, mm-hmm. kind of saying like, oh, Marcelo, you don't have one yet. I think they were playing each other maybe in the semifinals. Um, and then Marcelo pointed to his tattoo of his five Champions Leagues. But now he can add the Copa Libertadores tat to the same that was, area. That was poor from Gabi Go, I think. Yeah. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> Definitely, bro. Thank you. Shout out Marcelo, bro. You could argue it's hometown, easily. It's hometown. Yeah. Not gonna lie. You could easily argue, though, best left back of all time. A local hero over... We should have that discussion. A yeah, we can. I mean, we can. Local hero dominating Europe. Local hero. No los dos? local hero every day, bro. I'm an idiot. And he did both. Local hero every day. Bro, them guys are eating well. What? <laughs> the parties <laughs> in Brazil right now, nigga? Just crazy. Hey, Wild, bro. Be like that. I need to see the pro- yo. I need to see the parade though. Hmm. Championship parades tell you a lot. Anything about. they want. All you hear is. Oh, we need that kind of music on this clip too, for sure. Trust me. That's yeah. left back of all time. He's uh, he. It's him and Roberto Carlos. That's really it. You know, Fonzie's 23. Who also, you know, Scary. hey, Madrid uh, have their <laughs> eyes. Is, yeah, that was insane, bro. That insane. That's actually like... Uh, that's insane. Yeah. What's going on? If the boy wasn't Canadian... Fun fact, yeah. met him in Miami. That's Very cool guy. Thing. Bro, if he was some other... People, but he's like an anomaly though. Like, people fully hype him up. Like, no, people were calling him best left back in the world when they won the Champions League. Bro, it was 20. What he did to uh, Semedo, yeah. <laughs> Yo, what he did, the 8 2 over Barca? Yeah, Many, what like, he did to hey. Rashford recently. Yeah. That boy's a nice dog. That clip was <laughs> hilarious. Because that boy Rashford was running. <laughs> <boy, laughs> <boy, laughs> <boy>, but yeah, <laughs> he is on Madrid's target list. Thank so. you, Seth. We need a new left back. Fonzi, you know where to go. Bro, yeah, they suppo- get Alfonso. <laughs> <laughs> there's something. There's something about the contract. It would fit perfectly. There's too. something with the contract with um Bayern. I think he's trying to be out. Like there's a lower. Yeah. Like what was like fifty mil, which is obviously very low for him. But he's it's he's kind of fucked up too because we're trying to get Jamal Musiala as well. I was about to say Musiala. It's getting bad. They say Musiala. And Mbappe. They said Musiala is close. Yeah, and Mbappe. That's What's interesting though. Musiala Aries. and, and uh, <laughs> Jude together for sure. Because well, Jude is playing striker now, so they need another midfielder. <laughs> Judas is running around doing everything, honestly. They used to play together too, Jamal. Yeah. Judah. That'd be a insane disgusting team. Yeah. He he to me is the Fonzie only person. And Musiala. Yeah. But the right now, Fonzie's yeah. getting a little less the hype and the value is going down a little bit. I don't think they'd feel as bad. Jamal would be crazy though. People are saying that the like <laughs> But he'll wherever he goes, he's gonna do a super. Mine also don't sell um or I should say they do sell lemons, bro. Sell lemons. Do you know what I mean by lemon? 
No. Like just injury close. Prone. Yeah. Oh. Like when clubs do something, you're like, why are they sell this guy? Mm. Yeah. I have something that's gonna come up in a couple of years that <laughs> but we're praying not. Bayern has a relationship with Madrid, I guess. We got Tony Cruz, Ozil, right? Yeah. Oh, and not Ozil, not Ozil on tweaking. Yeah, but Tony. You'll send Hamas over there. Hamas, yeah, there's a little something, something. But you know, bringing it back into Europe. Uh, we had some pretty exciting games going on this weekend. One of them being in the Premier League where the title race just keeps on heating up. Uh, Newcastle, who's had quite a good couple seasons, mm. just beat Arsenal 1-0 yeah. with a very, very controversial goal. Yeah. Uh, I think in three different ways. <laughs> One, <laughs> was the ball out of bounds. Yeah. Two, was there a foul on um, an Arsenal player before the goal was scored? And was the goal scorer offsides? Everybody's saying VAR got it wrong, but the goal stands. They get their 1-0 victory. Um, Newcastle keeps doing well. Arsenal's obviously, you know, no longer in first place. But VAR just once again with lots of controversy, bro. I don't know. What are y'all thoughts on it? <laughs> I think, I think um, I'm gonna get Arteta's quote. Remember, we talk yeah, do it. I don't remember if it's the NBA or NFL where the rule is like if you are reviewing a play, um, it's like the ruling on the field stands unless there's like clear and convincing evidence. Mm -hmm. Is it the same thing for VAR? Yeah, it's supposed to be. Okay. It's supposed like, to be like the like the initial call gets has more weight. Out. It's supposed to be so yeah, like with penalties. The, if yeah. that's the case, then I think all the little things that they're trying to show—the ball going out of bounds, the potential push, the potential—like all of them were 50 50 So it's kind of like just let the go, like let the boys play. Mm. Let the boys play. Yeah, I know how I feel about VR. Yeah. Nice. How do you feel? Well, I have our Tato's quote, so I can tell you how he feels as yeah. well. <laughs> how does Mikel feel? You feel like Josh? Bro, he said we have to. <laughs> Funny, so Miguel, right. Miguel said we have to talk about the result because we have to talk about how the hell, <laughs> how the hell this goal stands. It's incredible. I feel embarrassed, but I have to be the one coming now here to try to defend the club, and please ask for help because it's an absolute <laughs> disgrace. <laughs> this goal is allowed. It's an absolute disgrace. It's not a goal for many reasons. It's not a goal for more than one reason. It's not a goal. It's too much at stake. We put so much effort. It's so difficult to compete at this level, and it's an absolute disgrace. I feel embarrassed. I've been in this country for more than 20 years, and this is nowhere near the level to describe this league as the best league in the world. I'm wow. sorry. He this went is, on. There's, there's, I could keep, and this is I fresh off more, the Liverpool more. debacle, yeah. which was yeah. crazy. Like, that was nuts. So, England, the lens is on you right now. This is kind of crazy, bro. Football is football. Mm. Football is football, for sure. But it, just even from an objective standpoint, the amount of media attention that this is getting, yeah. it's really ramping it's up in the Prem now, it's bro. It's really league. ramping it's up. It's not good yeah. for the league. They got to yeah. that. Cause... Do you think people will stop watching? Do you think nah, it has to get worse, bro. It has to get, like, like unwatchable. What, so, <laughs> what is the, like, because it, it's the getting line? to the point where... Question. It's getting to the point where people are complaining a lot about, like, Weekly, yeah. the the integrity of the game in England. But is it to the point where people will stop watching? I think it has... And is that is that what needs to happen to make an honest Yo, difference? If the fans don't show up to a game, right. that's when the change will occur. No, I don't think that's don't think it'll And I don't think they're. But do you think not they're at the level game. where fans won't show up? Right. No, it'd have to keep going. It'd have to. Because guess what? It's got to be a title race game, like later in the season. Like the it's got to keep getting worse. The problem. It's is still that, bad, but unfortunately, mistakes will end up helping one side. That's what I'm saying. Yeah. yeah. People side. don't go VAR so, on your side. It's on your side. That's yeah. the thing. Is like it's not like the refs are biased. They're just making mistakes. Yeah, and they have an equal opportunity to make a mistake against you as they do to have to make a mistake for you. So I think they're saying it shouldn't hold so much weight. That's the problem. But like the refs are gonna make mistakes either way. You're gonna just, but the whole point the of this was to make it easier. Though that shit, Kendrick was like, bro, like technology, low key, like. But just the essence of it, should it even be there? If there's still gonna be mistakes, like, I feel like you need to fully automate or give them the control. Like, that out-of-bounds thing should not have been debatable. There yeah. should be the goal line technology. Be on the line. Yeah. 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 Agreed. All I know is Newcastle been going crazy. I've seen James Park. Yeah, those fans they, are nuts, bro. City this year at home. They mm. Paris. 3-0. Yeah. Arsenal now. Yeah. It's, good. it's a fortress. It's good. it's good to see them back on top, bro, because it's been a while. Uh, and it's, it's good that it looks like they can keep this up now as yeah. well. We know they have crazy they investment fund of money. They, did a, they did a really good job. Yeah. Yeah. Bringing players. Uh, Willock and Willock. Anthony Gordon. Mm. Yep. Two yeah. ballers. Mm. Joel Linton as well. Two. Facts. Uh, Almiron, yeah, Il Maron, who we saw. Boy. Yeah, Zareski. Nah, it's good to see. Almiron's bro. a baller, too. He's a good group of guys. Talking about good city. Good group of blokes. Hmm. Nah, for sure. Talking about city. Jeremy Doku just dropped one goal, four assists. I told y'all. Insane. He's five. disgusting. You remember when we youngest talked about this? Player, player. Yeah. Youngest yeah. player in Prem history with five goal involvements. Damn. It's interesting to see because city definitely needs some <laughs> pace on the wing. 
That's what I was saying, bro. They needed a vertical presence. None of that cutback shit. You need the old school Sané, Raheem Sterling. When City had those guys, That's that scary. scared me more as the opponent. That's such an what interesting What Doku's thing, bro. doing, bro. Yeah. End line. I'm gone. He's filthy, so, bro. Explosive. Shifty. He's so, <laughs> City can buy anyone, right? They could they can get whoever they want. M- minus, minus maybe Vinny and Mbappe. In terms of like money value, yes, right. Like, oh, financially, yes. Yeah. No, no, like even yeah, financially, yes, and also like attracting cool. players to their project. Yes. Like yeah, cool. Vinny and Mbappe. Aside from those two, I Jude. think any and no, I'm talking about wingers. Oh yeah, yeah. So yeah, aside yeah, from yeah, those yeah. two wingers, I th- maybe Rodrigo, maybe not. Yeah. But aside from the, those two, three players, I think City could attract anyone. So if you look at the list in this summer of wingers that City could have gotten, like direct wingers with hype around their name, mm. Dembele. There's mm-hmm. Dembele. There's Leal. There's Kvartskalia. Mm. They went for Doku. And now, technically, Doku is having the best season out of all of those players. So is it the player or is it the system? Is it the coach? Recruitment, recruitment. Well, he's 21, so it's kind of to be seen in a way, right? He's kind of developing his career. We're seeing how good he's going to become, but… Because uh, one of the things is, it's crazy that City did win the trouble because I always felt like, y'all don't have enough end line pace like you used to. Then mm-hmm. they won everything. But then I think they still saw that was the one weak point. He kind of phased out Jack Grealish, which is crazy yeah. after Mar-ra's, last season. Mar-ra's and Mars yeah. left as well. It's like, we're changing it up. But that's part of being forward thinking is like, just because we won everything doesn't mean we shouldn't change anything. Yeah. And he knew what to change, and it's worked. Yeah. He's 21. Pep Masterclass. And Julian Alvarez is, what, 22, um, 3? Where's, and where's Doku coming from? I forgot. Stad, he's Belgian. Right? Yeah, he's Belgian, Belgian, but he was playing in France. Yeah, okay, that's an insane yeah. find, bro. Well, granted, he was balling out for Belgium. Yeah, yeah. Um, explosive. It's like Madrid getting comma for his first season uh, too, off a random team. I also can't yeah. see same the team. Bele, Leao. If it was Ren, yeah, yeah, or Rene, yeah. I can't see any of those players that you named going to City. Dembele, feel Leal, weird. Why? Uh, Kvartskalia. I feel like Doku kind of even just his like personality fits into the city system as far as yeah. being kind of like quiet, like ob- obedient is maybe a crazy word. Nope. <laughs> he's like he's a two <laughs> thumbs up smiling don't, guy. You don't know enough he's a, to say that. He, he's, he's obedient. He looks Not like a two obedient. thumbs up smiling well, you know, guy. We'll, yeah. we'll bring him here and you yeah. tell him he's <laughs> obedient. Oh no, but in a good way. Like he actually listens to the he manager. Can feed, he can fit in a system. Yeah, he's, he's a, a real coach's player. Like Leao, yeah. Leao, is that talk, Leao. But is that an insult? Leao with Pep is hilarious, oh, bro. What you the 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 way you're describing? Nah, the, Leao. Pep was like him. Of course I would. Are you? You gotta let him express Yeah. What? Are you insulting Doku? No, I'm saying like he fits. He fits into that system. Like a lot of wingers. To, in the modern game, whatever, very flashy, like off the pitch, big personalities. Like Doku kind of was just like, "Hey guys, like you got a little drip though." Nah, he's definitely fly, but he, but he be smiling like, a little, you know two thumbs up. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He's not trying to be too cool. And, I know what you're saying. Like yeah. he would disrupt things at City, whereas like Leao, I don't know how that's going. Personality, <laughs> like he's gonna beef with Pep. I can see it. He's gonna be like, I gotta go vlog. Shout out Rafa. I gotta go, I gotta go vlog. <laughs> I gotta go vlog. Nah, Yo, I gotta go to the studio today. I need to see a tree. When you said yeah. vlog and studio, I just need to see a, like a tree of Benzema's influence to all the modern footballers, bro. Because it's kind of crazy. What? There's niggas above Benzema in that tree. I'm not gonna lie. Really? Bex. Oh, I'm talking about like the lifestyle. Oh, Beckham. The lifestyle. Oh yeah, of bro. course. Yeah, yeah. Beckham. But I'm saying the modern version of it with the vlog and the camera and the Lambo and like the drip. Uh, like uh, Benzema's, bro. He really yeah, started a wave, it's, and his went the crazy. It was Benzi. It was Benzi and Memphis that did. Memphis, yep. Memphis. It was. Benzema it was different though. Benzema was the best player doing it. Facts. You know what I'm saying? Memphis like turned it into like an actual like production. Like, yeah, it's fire. I fuck with it, bro. It's tough, bro. Yeah. Leading the wave now. I know this is super tangent, tangential, but maybe Rafa? It's kind of like the flies do it out there. Yeah. Modern so football. Like, a lot. Yeah. Lot, yeah. So yeah. Compare that. Him, and, him and Moist. Shout out all the drip, all yeah. the dripsters though, bro. Shout out the dripsters yeah. on the men's side. Shout out the dripsters on the women's side as well. Why yeah. isn't Mbappe more fly? <laughs> bro, we talked me, about this, bro. That man hoop, nigga. It's not his mo. Yeah, let that man hoop. He, he's he's fly. Man. He's fly enough. They're all fly, man. Yeah. Bro, he's bro, not putting up bro. stats like that. It don't he's matter how you dress, bro. He be what? Wearing like a boo man two piece. <laughs> Just like fuck. Yeah. You know exactly what I'm talking yeah. about. Yeah, 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 yeah. Men's fashion over. He gonna wear it with waves and get the Ballon d'Or. Definitely. <laughs> Definitely, <laughs> bro. I need someone with waves to win the Ballon d'Or, please, in my life. Has that ever happened? Tim? 
You said has. <laughs> Yo, his dad is George. You meant George. Not you meant George. George, George Way, all right? George, okay. George. He didn't have waves, George. but <laughs> if George Way had waves, <laughs> what did he have? What did he have? He had a just short hair. Like he, yeah, he had short hair. Low cut. But he didn't. Did, 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 when did waves no, no, come, bro? One, did he one, did in '94, he did not know. have waves. I would, I would know. <laughs> one could argue Kareem had waves. What you said? Oh, facts. Benzema. Benzema yeah, had waves. Yeah, yeah, yeah. One could argue. You, you mean 360 argue. spinning. You mean a black person. You could, no, bro. Kendrick, he didn't have waves. I was trying to describe what he... It wasn't yeah. waves, bro. But, let's um, see what kind of hair George Ware had. He kind of did. Bro, let's talk about... kind of did is crazy. Now nah, we're going to get to that for sure. Fuck this. But um, I did want to ask y'all... I know that picture. <laughs> Good picture. Last That's a great uh, suit. Last black Ballon d'Or, when I know. I, I like the white suit way more than just like the all black. Oh, no, we've had one since then. Actually, Bro, Messi's African. cut as well. Messi's Man, cut. Anyways. What's wrong with Messi's cut? I was just going to ask y'all, with City's performance recently, though they've had some faltering early this season, Tottenham is now actually the only unbeaten team in the league. Although Kendrick thinks that might change tomorrow. It will. Do y'all think Tottenham has a chance? And do Tottenham you think City is definitely winning the league? Ooh, okay. Tottenham are winning the league. You think so? Yeah. Like, do you genuinely act like... I genuinely think so. They have no pressure. They have no pressure. So yeah. they've done this sneaky little thing where they've been so shit that, like, no one is going to put any pressure on them. And it's almost the, <laughs> it's almost the true. perfect... Not it's true. almost the perfect position to be in because their fans are quiet. It's not like, true. Arsenal... Let me get this clip off. It's not true. It's not true. That's not true. Let me tell you why it's true. Hey. <laughs> tell them. Tell them. <laughs> so, um, Arsenal, last year, they made the mistake of getting really hot, but their fans were like, oh, we're going to do it. We're finally going to do it. Blah, 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 blah. Tottenham fans, to their credit, have not been as boisterous about it. But they're playing arguably just as well as Arsenal was last year. You said they're they undefeated. Been as boisterous about no, it? they haven't. Okay, they have not. That's because you don't follow the Prem, bro. You don't I have do. Spurs fans friends. I say I don't I know do. Spurs fans. Yeah, actually, I do. Rambunctious. Nah, they've, they've been. <laughs> said I do. Said Com- said you, I do actually. You said you don't. He said he also, does. Also, comparatively, comparatively to Arsenal fans, they've been way more chill. So it's Would you not, not agree? It's because we're not looking for them niggas. Yeah, that's true. Yeah. That's true. Anyway, I also think the media has been way more chill about it. About the media, yeah. the media especially, has been way more chill because nobody <laughs> believes it can no yeah. happen. And that's yeah. my point. No one believes that it'll happen, that's and true. therefore the media hasn't really been like, "Oh, will Spurs win the league?" They haven't no. put any pressure on them. And yeah. when you have a team that is playing like they will win the league with no pressure it's to nice. win the league, nice. isn't that the yeah. perfect situation? Is that what happened with Napoli? Yeah, exactly. So, mm. Exactly. Leicester. I need to see more. Leicester. But I'd like to see it happen, bro. As That'd if, be really good if for the, the media prem. gives them four more months of calm. Nah, it's hard. After if the they give them break, four more months, if they, but the pressure's they, gonna ramp, bro. Bro, if they give them till the February, go stupid, and they're gonna say, "Will they get their first title since not in sex day?" Bro, like, if they gonna, give them, you know till, what I'm saying, bro? The pressure's gonna be nuts. If the media gives them till <laughs> February, they're winning the league. If the media starts talking about them crazy, they're going December, to January. If Tottenham's yeah. top for, at Christmas, yeah, yeah. It's, it's the Boxing Day conversations are gonna be bro, nuts. This is Harry Kane, bro. They just needed him to leave. I hope Tottenham. You think so? Yes. I hope it's you, a situation where Tottenham's like tied for like <laughs> that's first. Literally, that's literally it, bro. You like, you hope I hope I for them it's a situation where they're tied for first with City. Right, okay. Funny though, no funny though. Like, what does it actually what does it actually mean if Spurs win the first season? Kane is gone. Like, does that I mean, does that hurt Kane's legacy? It depends on whether or not he goes and wins the league with Bayern. I was just about to say they already he just two trophies. Yeah, I was gonna say, bro. He, he, he just dropped that Hattie, his third Hattie basket. of this season yeah, already, they and they beat Dortmund four 0 He's always been a goal scorer. But yeah, like he actually just loses every trophy. My thing is that so if he, what is if, just unlucky? but Bayern fans no, I'm, don't really I'm care saying. about a Super Cup and the German Cup. I think they do. Comparatively to Bundesliga, which is a must in, in, guarantee. In terms of just like they want to win everything. No, of course, of course. I but mean, I'm saying like he's going to be judged based on mm-hmm. the Bundesliga and the Champions League. Yeah. But he, and if they win both of those, they don't give a fuck about those two trophies. They're definitely not winning Champions League. You think, so? you think they're not? Definitely not? No. I think they have a chance. No. And I think Sané, they have a Sané's, chance because of the introduction of Kane and how well Sané's playing. Sané's yeah. playing well. Super more, well. I will say... Their the bench is deep as hell. The way Kane... That's a good always, team, bro. Yeah. The way Kane is dropping goals, though. If there was a Ballon d'Or discussion, he could be in it if they do win. The yeah, season. I mean, him and Jude probably right now. And Mbappe, yeah. It's true. No, Kane is one of the leading guys for the Ballon d'Or right now. Yeah, bro. No, that's true. Not, not uh, Madison. Ballon d'Or? No, but he's been balling out, bro. I fuck <laughs> with him heavy, too. He's doing super Ballon well. <laughs> I like the little celly they got with the little darts, him and Son. Thanks. They're balling together, bro. I'd like to see it's, the Spurs win it, though. It's visually nice to watch. It is. I, I'd actually they, like... They play visually. Yeah. Hmm. Bro, Spurs winning the league title for the first time since, I think, the 60s with an Australian coach in his Chelsea first season is nuts. Because their Chelsea coach is actually, them. like, you know, good. Yeah. He actually seems like he knows what the fuck he's doing. Yeah, he's, he was saying um how 
some places, you know, they're trying to turn their home stadiums into fortresses. He's like, ours is a party, bro. This is like a nightclub. We're having yeah. fun with it, bro. Yeah. <laughs> it's really exciting to see. And he's like, no matter what, we're pressing. Like, they have such an identity and yeah. such a game plan. And they, they run it with it, bro. I didn't know what's his name was Italian. Uh... Uh, Udogi. 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 Black one. Yeah, yeah. I didn't know he was Italian. Yeah. It's funny. Fly guy. Yes, um, sir. Ski. Uh, bringing it from Destiny. the men's to the to the women's side. Uh, his, name? his name is Destiny. Oh, for real? Udogi is Destiny? His first Fuck name is he's Destiny. He's not Italian. He's bare African. Fuck it. Mm. Destiny? His first name is Destiny. Yeah, if your name is anything like magical. It's not magic. Like, not magic, but like blessing related. Bro, you <laughs> saying that is so crazy. I was just about to say I'm about to go hang out with my friend Blessing after this. That's fucking nuts. <laughs> That's nuts. That's actually crazy. <laughs> is she African? Yeah. All right. Is that not a thing, bro? I like pass that into your brain. That's I crazy, know because I, I have people <laughs> my family named it. That's why for me it's like I'm, not, I'm just listening. Name faithful. Like, yeah, that's what I'm saying. Comfort. Very African. Comfort. I know a comfort. Magic. Said yeah, magic. <laughs> magic. Oh my god. He I, meant like be like. I definitely know a magical. Cool. Yeah, like, magical though. No, but he said is if your name is magical. <laughs> yeah. Destiny is not magical. You have a magical name? Are you from Africa? <laughs> Not magic. It don't finish, that kind of magic. It don't finish, you know, Fuck you. There are some places in like south southeast where the names are a little nuts. Southeast Africa where the names are crazy. Like <laughs> what, bro? Zimbabwe. <laughs> Zimbabwe. Oh, no, three of us. Do, are we, like what? I didn't say like what. Oh. No, Zimbabweans, they be calling their, their kids, like, nouns. Like, all right, let's move no, let's on. Move on. <laughs> I don't want to hear it. Not on the pod, though. Not on the pod. I don't. Shout out Zimbabwe, bro. Shout out our Patreon. Uh. <laughs> out we'll I almost it. wore my we'll Zimbabwe kit so we'll today, too. Like, sure. like, sure. like, it's getting weird, bro. This is, my, this is my third time trying. He's lying. This is my third time trying. <laughs> He's lying. No, no, no. Look at me. Yo, bro, that, be evidence. Bro. Moving from the men's game. I know, but you also were saying it too early before. You are saying it way too early. You're, like, cutting the episode in half. Table. Was insane. I'm not listening to that. <laughs> it's true. Lord have mercy. Talking about magical things. Yes. You know I mean? Talk about a magical coach. Hey, for me, I was gonna talk about the NFL itself first. We can talk about whichever one. A lot of magical things going on in women's football. For me, with the playoffs, semifinals today. Mm. Got San Diego Wave versus Well Rain, and we got Gotham Gang. You know what I'm saying versus Thanks. Portland. A little preview, Gotham. This is their first. They can, they're coming off the first ever playoff win in club history. Yes, sir. Versus a Portland who only lost to Gotham once since 2018 and won Portland last won. year. Yeah, Defending yeah, champs. Just won. Yep. You know what I mean, and so it's you know definitely a big matchup there. Rooting for New York, New Jersey versus San Diego Wave. They have Jaden Shaw coming Dang. off the women's national team for Naomi, who is an NWSL finalist for the second consecutive season. Um, she's a defender. No other defender's even been nominated once. Mm. So that, you know, pairing she's going against, bro, yeah, against Oral Rain, though, who for me got some veterans. She's only in her second season, right? Bro. Yeah, yeah. And they just killed the other West Coast team, Angel City. Yes, sir. So, Oral Rain got a few uh, national team players, too, right? Just for a fact. Yep. So it's it's getting down to the wire, spicy, hopefully. Spicy. Rapino's final games, too. Bro, right? that's what I'm saying. Yeah. So honestly, I'm lo- really looking forward to San Diego Wave versus Oral Rain. Yep. That should be a proper... I need a Wave... Um. Gotham final for sure, bro. Obviously, wavy footy, and then we got our local girls too. Same. And they turned it around from last season. They had a tough Gotham season bro. last year. They've really turned it around, sure, sure. ramped it up. Stinky, bro. This is mm. good to see. Stinky last year. Every time we went yeah. to the match, we were like, "Damn." Yeah. Hey, bro. One exciting thing about NWSL is that teams can flip the script like that in one season yeah. Yeah. in both directions. I think that makes it really exciting rather than some of the standard European things we see. You kind of know it's going to be top three or four more or less. No oh, man. So very exciting, bro. Definitely it's cool. For Gotham makes Check it way easier matches. to get into the game. Yeah, as a fan, no matter they call it parody. Yeah, Yeah. no matter where you are in the country, like you have a chance. Mm -hmm. How how do y'all feel about Gotham being New York, New Jersey? It's just Jersey, to be honest. I mean, it's coming from sky blue. Yeah, trying to show some representation. It is what it is. It's marketing, man. It's weird. It's like but Red Bulls, how it used to be. They're not tied to. Imagine it was New York, New Jersey Red Bulls. Yeah, I think they should just have like a single thing. Man. Even if you, even I'd be okay with the New York thing, and then you play in Jersey and you try to find yeah, yeah. a stadium in New York eventually. I don't think you really need it, or just really claim Jersey, but teams don't do that. So yeah, or just be like the Jets, New York Jets. Yeah, the New York, New York, New York Liberty. I mean, New York gang. <laughs> no, that's correct. New York Liberty is a team. <laughs> yeah, get what I was. <laughs> I'm fucking crying. I mean, but it's very American. Like to have to put like the the state this New the York New Jersey. Yo, somebody was, somebody was to um 
at work was talking about that the other day. Like, why do we have to like put the? Like, we don't do that in you don't do that in Europe. Like, you don't have to like specify where the city that the team plays in is. Oh, you mean the state, the representation of ah. versus location. Like, we don't say like Italian. Whenever we be like Torino, Juventus. Like, they'll never say that. Yeah, but a lot of teams have the city name. AC Milan. Yeah, sure. Real Madrid. But a lot of teams don't. Manchester United. Yeah, of course. Like a lot of like the teams in London don't really have it. Although Chelsea's an area in London yeah. too. Are you saying like representation of like the team versus location of the stadium? Yeah. yeah. Like no I mean, one no one's gonna like no one feels the need to specify. Yeah, I mean we also don't even have like you don't name a team after a mascot too. You feel me? Like it's not the Real Madrid Knights. Oh. You know what I'm saying footy in you Europe. Should, you think they should? No, I like it. I think it's sleeker. It's like Real Madrid Football Club. I like that more. A club de football Real Madrid, you know what I'm saying? Yeah, the, the it mascot makes, it makes serious. It, the mascot makes it a bit gimmicky. Yeah. 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 Like the Seahawks. Like the Wizards. My Seahawks just got clipped <laughs> the today. The Wizards is at, like it's arguably the, the worst. worst. I agree. Yeah. yeah. Don't Everybody. even make sense, bro. Why? And that team is doo doo. Yeah, Niggas with the bullets for a long time. Shit. Yeah, now true. bullets is insane. <laughs> Until <laughs> Gilbert Arena stepped in. Bullets is insane. Because DC was like the murder capital at one point. Hence, Definitely, bro. It's the bullets. The bullets is nuts. <laughs> No, nah, but speaking, you know, staying in women's footy, the U.S. women's national team is allegedly about to get uh, Emma Hayes as the new coach. Thanks. Emma Hayes is the current coach of Chelsea who has uh, recently said that she will be leaving Chelsea at the end of the season. Mm. She's been there for 11 years and won 15 trophies. So she's an absolutely legendary coach. She's really built this current dynasty that we've seen with your, with your team, bro. So, yeah, I think that's a really good pickup if it is official news for the U.S. women's national team. Um, Because you could argue she's the best coach in the world, honestly. Right. So, really, really big pickup for the maybe, national team. It made me kind of sad. because like, It was a shocking uh, news, apparently, yeah, that she was going to leave. Came out, yeah. It was just like, she's gonna. they said she's going to pursue opportunities outside of football. And then we found out... U.S. women's national team. Opportunities in football. I was like, damn. To be fair, the U.S. women's <laughs> national team coaching opportunity is kind of like in the men's football... Real Madrid or the Brazil oh, national team. It's like that one. It's the top, top, it's like top Ancelotti choice. Going to Brazil. 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 Yeah, which yeah. isn't official yet. But so, as yeah. a national team coach, do you, how often are you working? Do y'all know? That's the other question. I mean, it's a you're still working a, a lot, a but it's a different cycle. pace. Yeah, it's a recruitment. The recruitment season's heavy. Um, you also, have the friendlies every now and then. You're taking in a lot of information. Yeah. Qualifiers. Yeah. But like, are you often at home? Are you in the office with your team? <laughs> Questions. You, you're is it like is in the office? Calmer, is it calmer it's life? calmer. It's definitely calmer life. But women's, they actually play, if I'm not mistaken, they play more international matches. I think so. I definitely noticed more international yeah. breaks. You even look at the amount of caps some of the players have. It's mm-hmm. a lot more. And there's than, like systems in place for yeah. like, during the international matches. Yep. They, bring out, they bring players from other teams. Yep. And bro. Yeah. It's a different cycle to it, but but is it calmer? You think? Yeah, for sure, bro. It's not the same when we're training four times a week. We're traveling to this match, then we got to prep for this calmer. next appointment. It's yeah. calmer, but it's hell more pressure. So probably. that's the thing: is the pressure. It comes points. down to these smaller moments. Yep. Tournaments, yep. Yeah. tournament pressure points. You mess up. Tournaments are gone. scary, bro. Fire real quick. Yeah, bro. Tournaments are Depends scary. Depends on the bro. country too. Yeah. Some countries only give you so many, t- uh, so much time. I'll say one of the most exciting things about being the women's national team coach right now is the amount of talent. Specifically, young black talent Come on. on our national team. Yeah, That's a whole nother way of ushering in. Jaden, you know, Naomi, yeah. Hertz, we got mm-hmm. um, Morgan, people that ain't no getting older and weeding out. Shaw, Rodman, yep. Naomi. Naomi, too. Bro. Alyssa Thompson. It's a ridiculous team. Bro. Bro. Yep. Thompson. And, bro, after a dis- <laughs> and after a disappointing World Cup, who better to have come in and say, all right, I got my new girls, new coach. Let's get another World Cup. You, Olympics coming up this summer too, which you, is huge in women's football. Yeah. How do you so, think about the women's U.S. national team's coach being British? I mean, the current one uh, wasn't American either. Facts. So I don't think it's a big deal. It's already a standard that they don't have to be American, so I'm kind of whatever. Hey, man. Yeah. I wonder how the Brits feel, actually. It's going to be more interesting. So. <laughs> you know, Morgan did that selling. Yeah, little T. Yeah. Yeah, that's so, up. So. She got it off on him. Rivalry. But uh, before we leave the end of this, I do want to shout them out for having record attendance this season. Of course. Um, it's been up 32% this year, uh, heading into the semifinals, which I'm sure we're going to see more amazing turnout. And uh, keeping it within U.S. footy and talking about um, attendance records, the MLS has also seen record attendance. It is up 5% from last year. Um, so congrats to both of our local top flight leagues and just having better and better attendance. Like, the sport's growing purely simple. You know what I'm That's saying? Ex- so exciting, exciting. Speaking of MLS, we're obviously in the playoffs right now. Mm-hmm. Things are getting quite hectic. Uh, we got the best of three format that we talked about on a previous episode. It's cool. And Josh, you were at the playoff match yesterday at Red Bull. Saw a little penalty shootout. 
Hmm, little penalty. <laughs> Best of three. What's going on? <laughs> Feel me? But you have to have a winner. And so it went to it's one one. New York Red Bulls, Cincinnati came back. Cincinnati beat them 3-0 the first match. So the way they were playing, it made sense because Cincinnati low-key, there wasn't like you know, Red Bulls, they be having the possession and you know, yeah, they just have the possession. But Cincinnati came back, penalty shootout. Red Bulls could have won it. Mm. Feel me, Cincinnati missed a pen. Red Bulls hit the post at the last one, so they did another five. Red Bulls missed one. Went down to the last kick. The defender, Red Bull defender, the way the guy went up. <laughs> you could just, uh, Yo, you can tell a lot about a penalty with the walk-up. Bro. You can tell almost everything, everything. bro. And it's so they, that was their season, though, because it's two out of three. Yep. Yeah. You know? Um, they also had to play into the playoffs. So mm. like, there was much hope. You saying Red Bull? Yeah. yeah, for the new format, the one single game elimination. Since was, did they go to penalties too against Charlotte? Oh no, they killed Charlotte, right? They smacked them. It was like five two. Okay, never mind. It's also yeah. weird because there's like it's a penalty shootout, but there's so much pressure on the other team compared to like Cincinnati. So yeah. much pressure on yeah, them. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, they were chilling. Cincinnati, like we have another game at home, right? So no, nah. no nah, Red Bulls, Red Bulls lost Miss. it at home. Miss, <laughs> miss the <defense. laughs> Oh, because they won two 0 right? Or they won the series 2-0. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, right. Like okay. Once you win the first yeah, yeah. game, you're like, yeah. This one, we'll see what happens. But <sighs> it's interesting too, because speaking of that format, it comes from American sports. For you know, we have a very global audience for those who don't know. Um, in a lot of American sports, they do a best of seven series. Mm-hmm. So it's the first one to win four matches. So it can take up to seven games to see who will win them. Uh, but speaking of that, the NBA, you know, we're talking about M- MLS taking maybe from these American sports, you know, mm-hmm. NBA. But the NBA now has an in-season tournament right. similar to FA Cup, Copa yeah. del Rey, yeah. um, the French Cup, all that sort of thing. And to me, I think that's directly taken from soccer. Not in any sort of bad way, Honestly. but I think the NBA trying to be such a global sport and successfully doing so, being probably the second biggest sport in the world, mm-hmm. um, having an in-season tournament, I think they're looking at the global landscape and seeing an opportunity to, to emulate what soccer I think has. Adam Silver said that word for word. It makes sense, bro. Yeah. Like Is it internal? Yeah. yeah, it's an and what's interesting too is that the in season tournament counts towards the regular season eighty two game structure. So it'd be as if FA Cup matches you'd win that trophy, but those games are also counting towards your point yeah. total. Oh, did yeah, feel, the reason they did and this is the first season. Would still care. Yeah, mm-hmm. and apparently it's working. It so, bro, the Knicks. I missed the second half, but that was a crazy game, crazy ending, and like players are trying to play for it for real. The tournament started already. Yeah, it starts and they're only on like game five or six. <laughs> they're doing it at the beginning of the season. Start. Few weeks ago, few like weeks, two weeks ten, ago, ten days ago. So is it yeah. gonna be a thing where like the first half of the season <laughs> is the tournament? No, it's much smaller. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I and think the tournament ends in what December? Yeah, it's pretty quick. Yeah, it's not not too bad. That's cool. But then they're even going to Vegas for the finals and stuff, which is really cool. So like they're having a destination for it. Mm-hmm. It also I think is opening the door to a, a Vegas team in the NBA. Yeah. But no, I just think it's interesting. I think they're directly taken from footy. And I think it just shows how much influence the sport has so, for the NBA to see it and be like, we should add this. To our league, which has never been there, and it's very kind of sacred. The NBA being the thirty teams, the very specific structure, making that big of a change is quite something. It's quite a big deal. So, it's just more influence of footy, bro. What I'm hearing is, if you're an athlete in this last five years, you're running and running more. Yeah, more games. Yeah. This isn't more games, though. Oh, true. It's not more games. I yeah. mean, so you said there's a final. Yeah, so it all counts towards the same eighty-two games. I just see this confusing. It is. Also like, is there a semi? There has to be a semi. There is, but essentially they'll just adjust the schedule so that different teams are playing in those times, but it's not more games. Yeah. So that's the only benefit. It's not more games. So it's yeah. like if I was scheduled to play, mm. if I'm the Pacers and I was scheduled to play the Blazers, mm-hmm. you know, in March, but my final is against the Blazers, that March game doesn't happen and it's now our final. And the loss or around. win that happens in it goes to my regular season um, record, but mm-hmm. it also counts for the tournament. Yeah. I rock with it in that way, too, because we talk a lot about football, bro. It's too many games. So if you are going to change the format, don't add games. Yeah. And footy keeps adding games. The Champions League is about to get larger next it's season. Actually, the it's World actually Cup's perhaps, getting larger. <laughs> perhaps it's a way for footy to look at the NBA. A little back and forth and right here. a way to, to lessen the games. They'll never yeah. do it. They'll never do and it. And people are complaining about the, eight, you know, they do the load management there. Yeah. Do we need 82-game regular season? Right? Does footy need the Nations League and all these extra things? Mm-hmm. Do we need a larger group stage for the Champions League? Do we need more traveling to across Europe? Like, players are tired, bro. Physically, mentally drained. We're seeing it. And they're openly talking about it. Yuck. Yeah. For a fact. So, talking about the MLS, you know, um, playoffs is here. Across the world, we have people going crazy in the Saudi League, like Ronaldo, doing celebrations with Mane every other week. Yes, sir. Scoring a whole shit ton of goals. Um, is it still getting the same visibility and respect? You know, even being a trailblazer for the Saudi League. Um, I don't know. Have y'all even been keeping up? 
to be honest. Because for I, me, I won't lie, I haven't been watching Saudi like that, but I see a lot of development, even in the fact of all the players that have gone there. Yeah. It's getting more competitive. And I think, too, what's interesting is just seeing, like, the media perception of Messi taking over MLS versus the media perception of Ronaldo taking over the Saudi League. Yeah. Because he's playing at an incredibly high level right now. Like, regardless of even what the competition is, the types of goals he's scoring are not regular. They're not tap-ins. Yeah. And that league has improved. It is getting better players. So, mm -hmm. I think he's getting a little underrated for how well he's playing that right now. Insane amount of, like, all-stars. We've already said their all-stars would be better than MLS. <laughs> and he's scoring nice goals, bro. Yeah. Um, Just, I mean, credit to him for his longevity, bro. He's 38. Yeah. Him and LeBron is crazy. The, the other thing is, like... Crackheads. Actually, the other thing obsessed. is um, the Saudi national team hired Mancini, Italy's former oh, coach. Oh, yeah. And Yaya Toure is his uh, under, like under coach, whatever the term is, that's, assistant coach. That's yeah. big. Coach. Under is crazy. Under. Wait, wait, Yaya Mancini's Toure. the new national team coach? So Mancini is Saudi Arabia's new national team coach. Our pits. Oh, because homeboy left and coached yeah. the women's team. Yeah. And um, Yaya Toure is his assistant manager. <laughs> that's fire. I think it's cool. <clears throat> That's really cool. If they can keep top-level management there, and especially if that level of coaching gets into the youth structure, that's going to change things. Yeah. Because they have the finances. They have the funding. And they're they can really the build. They're definitely going to host the World Cup. They're hosting. If they can build that infrastructure, we might see our first Middle Eastern football oh, powerhouse. So, guys, I have something. This is in, in, in regards to um, World Cups and stuff. Um, something kind of like uh, controversial that, that seems to be the case. So, y'all know how the World Cup rule, and I'm, I might butcher this, so this, give me this a This is what I was going to talk about. Oh, okay. Yeah. Like, when, who hosts it? Yeah. Do you know how to, like, say it correctly? About, like, the two-year? The two in a row? Yeah. Yeah. Like, how the U.S. is going to host Each like, federation kind of thing? Back to back? I don't know. Okay, let me go. Maybe, let me go, and then yeah. we'll see. You're saying so, the women's one? So, no. So, you know how FIFA has the rule where a confederation has to wait, um, I believe it's four years... Or, okay, sorry. Two, two cycles? cycles. FIFA, two has cycles. A, FIFA has a rule where they have two to cycles, wait yeah. two World Cup cycles before um, your confederation can host again. Yes. Right? Correct. Yep. So, 2026, you have USA, right? Yeah. Um, the the teams, they're the, the nations that are now blocked from hosting in the, not in 2026, but in 2020, in 2030, are uh, a, an Asian nation because Qatar hosted mm -hmm. and a CONCACAF nation because U.S., Mexico, right. and Canada are hosting. Yes. So then you have, in 2030, you have that kind of global World Cup where you have South American nations and you have Europe as well. Right? And Africa. And Africa. Which means that at that point, the only nation left is Australia because you have Africa who's been blocked out, USA who's been blocked out, sorry, uh, Africa has been blocked out, Europe has been blocked out, South America has been blocked out, and... Um, uh, CONCACAF North America has been mm -hmm. blocked out. At that point, once uh, Asia hosts, or sorry, once Australia hosts, the the list of CONCACAF, the list of nation, the list of uh, confederations that are able to host, is literally only just North America. Is it, is what? Because <laughs> I'll explain why. I'll explain why. So Europe, Wait, Europe. At what point? At what point? Asia and Australia at, is considered Oceania, right? It's yes. Not the yeah. Asian Confederation, yes. even yeah. though they play in the Asian. Oh, yes, exactly. Okay, okay. So you have so by by the year twenty thirty four. So when is when is I think Saudi Arabia hosts twenty thirty four. Yes. By twenty thirty eight, the only confederation that will be able to host a World Cup is Concacaf. You know, I think that's false. I don't think they're gonna. I promise. The first. Not. Three games being in South America, I don't think they're going to hold them against that for hosting a World Cup, a full World Cup there. It is. They are? So, I'd, yeah. I'd be tight if I'm going to in bowl. Yeah. That sucks. They only get, get three games? Yeah. So, hmm. Don't even add me then. Give me the World Cup after. So what I That's was, actually yeah. fucked. So what I was going to say was a tangential to that mm -hmm. is I think it's a little sus um, the way that everything led up to Saudi hosting the World Cup in 2034. Mm -hmm. um, Which is not confirmed, by the way. It, it there's is. no other bids. It is confirmed. It is. Mm -hmm. Really? Mm -hmm. yeah. Why did I not ever see official only, news on that? Like, that's on FIFA.com? Yeah. Exactly. It's, it's sus. That's very <laughs> sus, bro. I've other, never seen a sneaky World Cup appear. The that's only crazy. The federation <laughs> I was, that is eligible for that uh, World Cup in 2034 was Australia. 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 But they just hosted the Women's World Cup. And they literally, the spokesman for the federation was like, we can't compete with, like, the buying power. Oh, and the, just the momentum that Saudi has right yeah. now to even try to like push for that. Put a bid, bid together. Yeah. So to think about how 
the convoluted structure of the World Cup, the World Cups that are leading up to that being in so many different places. Yeah. It's like, why did FIFA just suddenly decide to like host all these games? Ah, oh, that's crazy. Yeah. In order so for Three to continent one World country, Cup. One country left that's eligible. It's weird. Yo, they're good, bro. They're, they're good. They're this good. <laughs> it's crazy. It's weird. It's I actually mean, nuts. And no, but, weird, but again, once Saudi Arabia hosts, it's just North America. So the US I wasn't is, thinking about that. The US actually, is then gonna get another World Cup. It's interesting. After twenty twenty six. Oceania yeah. though. Oceania yeah. could. So Australia could just do it afterwards. First of all, Australia doesn't have the infrastructure to do it. They just right, they just hosted a great World uh, Cup. Uh, um a men's World Cup with the amount of teams that are going to be playing at it. They don't. If they do the forty-eight, yeah, they don't. They don't have crazy. Then you need how many? I think you need fourteen they stadiums. They're gonna do it in Australia and New Zealand. Fourteen stadiums. Yeah. Which Bro, cities? This is coming from the guy who wanted the Caribbean World Cup. Man, anything is yeah. possible. Yeah. Anything is possible. What do you mean, suck your? <laughs> <laughs> I'm, rooting for, I'm rooting for that one. Yeah. How did it get to this? <laughs> Like, you see these rough boys yeah, on the podcast, rough, 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 rough boys, bro. I'm rooting for them, I'm rooting for them, bro. If you don't uh, understand, ask for clarification. Uh. <laughs> clarification. Uh, <laughs> he, said that's he, he understood. Just, he doesn't he understand, understood. so it's Come offensive. Come on, bro. We got the carny, you he know what I'm Arsenal kit in the back. He doesn't <laughs> understand, so it's offensive. Yeah. He <laughs> just starts yelling and shit. Fuck, man. Um, anyways. Hopefully travel will be faster by 2040, 2038. Damn. Nigga, I'm trying to get to LA in two hours. 2040? Yeah. I won't even be on earth at that. Yes, you will, bro. Don't say that. In Jesus' name, you will. Please. In Jesus' name. And let's recognize in the moon and shit. I'm going to be in heaven with Ali. <laughs> what? <laughs> <laughs> laughing. Yo, that I'm was laughing. crazy I'll be, as I'll fuck. I'll be in heaven. Laughter. No, it should Who be Who is this nigga, bro? Like, what's going <laughs> on, bro? It should be like, I should be in heaven with then a blank. <laughs> yeah. Ball player. <laughs> Yo. Terry, you will be one. Y'all are funny as hell. Jesus Christ. Speaking uh, of Thierry Henry, though, what? I did want to ask y'all one quick question before we go on to Fitz and all that. Do you think the current state of football mm. has lesser quality players than when Thierry was playing? <laughs> yeah. Because I haven't seen a uh, lot of comments about disgusting. that, especially related to the loss of the 10 position, yes, saying bro. that position going away is the loss of that quality going away. Yeah. Um, Nobody is actually consistently good anymore. Like, no one is. I think they mean also from like a the technical perspective, like no, flair, all that kind of stuff. Streaking. I know you're definitely passionate about this topic. Um, no. you are. Yeah. Quality is the definition of quality and what we mean by quality. Yeah. Because I think if you're coming... Kaka, Dino, them type of ball. Yeah, you're yeah. not going to find like players that have that sense of magic also because the game has changed. Even the speed of play of the game has changed what quality means. Yeah. You know, look at wingers. Don't slow it down the same way, bro. Yeah. Yeah, a lot, and talking about your technology, how that's affected the longevity in the game and shit like that. But yeah, the number ten position, bro. That was a very, bro. This, that was it. You have the ten on your back. People won't even watch you play. They'll say, "Congrats." Yep. Literally, has happened to me before. Mm -hmm. bro, do you I'm, think it has to do with the monetization of the sport? <laughs> how like billions and millions and gajillions are being spent left and right. Not so it's like really. the players that we're expecting to be quality because we're spending hundred million on them. It's like they're not living up to that. You know what I'm saying? No. I, I know what you're saying. I think expectation, the, expectation. Yeah, said, like Caicedo. Bro, like, someone said Anthony was the worst use of funds to spend on a person ever. <laughs> I saw that he has factually more Premier League yellow cards than gold contributions. <laughs> That's really tough, bro. He's nah, a yeah. little fiery guy. Yeah. Okay. Now, nah, the money thing is very, very interesting to add. But yeah, bro, the lines are getting blurred. Um, but world class, yeah. I would say the ten allowed in the way you the, play, yeah. yeah. The ten allowed the Ozil, to like, express it, yeah. like even James Rodriguez, bro, for Colombia. Yeah. Like, when Come was on. there a standout performance ten. in the yeah. tournament? That was a real position where you could just dribble people and create goals. It's the pocket, the pocket behind the strikers. Don't right. uh, Pele. Do we have yep. people of the generation? And it's I think because you had Messi for so long, but perhaps because he was so good at that position. That. Was he? he well, he was a winger, a period, but a he put himself. He would dribble in and then be in a ten position. Yeah. That's why I think it's a little exaggerated. Just because it's not on the team sheet doesn't mean people don't get into those pockets and do all that. Yeah. Modric is a ten. Where's the ten? Even if on the team sheet he's technically a six or an eight. Like yeah, you know what I'm saying. So, um, yeah. I think there might be a little bit of loss in quality from that position, but I do think it is a little over exaggerated. And I think in sports or even in music and culture. We tend to um, really romanticize the past a little bit more than we have to. And I think it's just always, be, oh, you remember back in the day, man? You remember the old Drake? Yo, you remember, oh, back with it. I just feel like that's kind of what we do with sports as well. Like, we got some really flary 
technical, talented players. We have Vinny, Jamal Musiala. People are saying plays like Kaka. I see some of the comparisons. Tyrion Henry specifically is the one who said that. Um, Saka. Saka's really talented. Honestly, one thing Saka's about the good. 10 in general, yeah. if we're talking about even branding within the sport, because as you're saying, you know, there might not be the 10 on the team sheet, but it's yeah. actually having the 10 on the team sheet and having the 10, you know, be actually like, you know, where it's saying it's being played. Yeah. And additionally, the 10 is four dribblers who are also the best player on the team. There was a period in time that was across the board. And the passing. Yep. yep. And, it and does so something. once once you have that tapping on your good, especially once you have that fulfillment of expectation, it creates the expect you know, more expectation and more fulfillment. Yep. And that's yeah. where we get like yep. the excitement as fans. You were saying yeah. though, sorry. No, I was gonna say that adds to the mentality of your team too. Man. It's like, all right, we can get behind this guy. He yeah, can yeah. do this when we're down bad. Bro. He's gonna make something happen. For but, like who's who's that for United? The number seven, Mason Mount? I'm kind of <laughs> that's just like seven's a good number but, too. But yeah, I'm saying, like the, yeah, those oh, yeah. powerful numbers yeah, yeah. that used to have so much weight. Like, all right, the number seven get the ball, he gonna make something happen on the wing. Number yeah. ten and, get the ball, he gonna mm-hmm. distribute or go down the middle. Yeah. And speaking now, of it's like those two numbers, yeah, it's, yeah, it's, all it's not the same. But speaking of that too, dead. the whole yeah. team sheet just has a different meaning now, bro. And speaking of the changing of quality of players, look how much more technical defenders are now, that's, on average. That's fair. Bro, we actually have ball-playing center backs. Like, that's bro. a thing now. Even goalkeepers. Bro. Even goalkeepers. Everyone's getting more talented across the board, in my yeah. opinion, on average. Man. Think about the type of right-backs and left-backs we have in this generation. Think about English right-backs alone, with, with Kyle Walker, Reese James, and Trent Alexander-Arnold. Being able to play that position with that type of technique. I mean, Trent sometimes American is playing defenders. center mid, bro. Huh? American defenders, too. Yeah, we have really talented American defenders. Look how Serginio Dest dribbles. It's actually kind of incredible. Serginio Dest is a dribbler, bro, for real. Yes, he is. For a right back? Don't play with me. A lot of, you can a lot watch of, his highlights. A lot of uh, defensive <laughs> backs. So. for a right back? In this day and age, saying for a right back doesn't mean shit. Serginio Dest dri- right dribbles better than most right backs, bro. At like the end actually, of the day, even defensive true. backs. A lot of defensive backs used to be. It's not true. In general, right. a lot of defensive. Watching, I like, watched him for a year. I didn't watch highlights. Show me. I, I want to see play. every defender's high little. You know, dribbling mixtape. Dino's. Or, I'll play a defender Dino who can dribble. Dino. Kevin. Dino. Exactly. See, forty and slip. That's just pretty <laughs> crazy, bro. He's got some pretty crazy. Anyway, he's expressive. Yes, he's flip, very expressive. But yeah. Man, back to the point. <laughs> I'm crying. I will say the way football is going. I don't see Fred should start over him. Anyway, I don't see any um. He just scored a goal. He did. Which is nice. Mm-hmm. Who scored? Um, Paredes. Kevin's Kevin. Kevin's. Oh, yeah. Shout out Kevin. I don't see anything consistently because I'm going to lie. The 10 also, like, Ronaldo 7 did a lot. Did extremely a lot. You know, I don't know another position that will have that expectation. It has to be the 7 now. It is. Mbappe, Vinny. That's the number yeah, right that's now. That's the number. Sure. I mean, seven. and 10, though. 7 and 10. Those are the two numbers. And, and I just nine. see that for the first... Yeah. I mean, Yeah, I, that's the one that's kept its value in terms of what the position is true. you still say my number nine you don't say that about nothing else other than keep your number one whatever a seven but. is technically the right wing no one says that it's not a thing my seven my ten like that's not 11 anymore was the, the left, left. Gigs. yeah i mean actually for those who don't know the numbers coming directly from where you line up on the pitch yeah. and the used teams used to only have one through 11 yeah. the additional numbers were then just the substitutes for that yeah. so mm. yeah and now obviously you can be fucking Foden was like 47 99 99 25. 45. Didn't Ronaldo wear in 99 at Milan? No, nah, 7. Ronaldo? Oh, at Milan? At Milan. Oh, yeah, oh, yeah, yeah. You yeah, wore 99, right? right? Yeah, it's, it's funny. Like, nah, Dino wore 80. Yeah. <laughs> you uh, like uh, it? Why was it again? I don't know. Mm, but I think it's cool as fuck. There's a reason. Sure Low-key numbers I like. I like 23 in, in footy, actually. Fire. Yeah, I like how Beckham took that from basketball and made it like a footy number. Mm, yeah. More influence for him. That is cool. But uh, speaking of influence, one thing that also influences us is music. Lots of music been dropping, and I know we're always avid listeners of all types of stuff. What y'all been listening to recently? Hey, man. Real quick, I'm going to shout out my guy, RSKO, dropped the album, Memory. It dropped? Yeah. I like Damn. Too. Nah, bro, I'm not going to hold you. I the melodic... Huh? I wasn't even hip. Yeah, bro. It dropped on Friday? Yeah. Damn. Nah, melodic production on that was smooth. That's a talented boy. I'm going to listen to that too. Doing his thing, so shout out him. I'm a little old, but shout out this one tune called San Siro. There was actually remix on it. <laughs> yeah, check it out. By R.S. Kill? Oh, no, no. Oh, okay. It's by another um, uh, West African artist. But yeah, cool. no. It was a very proper song about love. Fire. <laughs> I've been listening to <laughs> that new... Oh, go ahead. You in love, bro? Nah. Love's good, bro. It's great. Uh, for my music kick... I'm always in love. Sheesh. With the game. <laughs> nah, but uh, for my music pick this week, I'm going to give it to Ryan Trey. Uh, just dropped an album called... <laughs> back It, Back It. 
Yeah, I will. The same way? It's like a time, bro. Oh, shit. Go ahead, go ahead. Now, but yeah, so my music pick for this week is going to be Ryan Trey, um, The Streets Say You Miss Me. So, Fire R&B album. For those who might not be familiar with him, um, he's been co-signed and worked with Bryson Tiller. So, if you're into that type of vibe, you know, Party Next Door, Brent Fires, that's the type of artist you can find there. Um, just a really talented dude. He can sing. He can rap. Really honest and vulnerable lyrics, as well as just like, you know. Some good spooky R and B, bro. So mm. we went crazy with that. Another artist out of St. Louis. St. Louis has been going um, crazy recently in music, and yeah, it's another dope artist, bro. And he was also at a St. Louis um, game, mm. repping the team. It's as hard. I was mentioning, how they're trying to make a culture. You know what I'm saying? That's hard. That's hard. Yeah, bro. Mm. Shout out Ryan. Um, Gunna dropped a new track. Really? Yeah. How was it? This is fire. Mm. Solo. Uh, with Turbo, but yeah, so, so it was solo. Mm. Um. And oh, Pharrell in my mind, old album things from like early two thousands. Fire, it's been hitting. Pharrell's too talented, bro. Um, I I got reminded of him because of the the brand. I was gonna say Virginia production, Timberland yes sir. Production, and yes, I was sir. like, yo, another crazy producer from that era was Pharrell. And like, I went back and listened. I was like, nah, like, ran this. Shit. Virginia's <laughs> underrated for music, bro. And Missy Elliott and Chris Brown, like VA got some. Hit as well. Like Scissor? Do you have a question mark? Push the T. Scissors from Jersey, actually. Oh, yeah. Um, <laughs> I guess I'll shout out Nems. Um, okay. Because my brother's been listening to Nems for like two oh. weeks now. So, yeah. Tell really about, about Ryan Trey. How you feel about his? Ryan Trey is a really good album. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Oh, also, if y'all know Jordan Ward, who's also from St. Louis, right. that's on White Crocs. Ryan Trey is the featured artist. True. So, yeah. Thanks. Guys, some quick would you rathers and then fits. Yeah. Cool. Um, yeah, so I have some fun would you rathers for us. We'll discuss um briefly. Um we might do two or three of these. Um we'll start with this one. Would you rather have the ability to read your opponent's mind or have the strength of ten players on the field? <laughs> <laughs> That's a Seb question. Let, let me just let y'all know right now. That is a Seb question. I want to hear Seb's answer first. Yeah, definitely. Uh, lead the way. <laughs> I'd definitely rather read minds. Are you kidding Why? me? Why? I feel like you said you would play the likes to play mind games, so that sounds yeah. exactly like yeah. what you would want to do. So much more fun. Why? You can only strength the ten players is scary. The strength of ten players is like <laughs> it's like insane, but like well, what are you really doing with it? With the strength? Yeah. Well, they I can't mean, get the ball if you're shielding it properly. Me if I'm shielding, <laughs> like, correct. You're shielding like also off corners, like. But you you can only push so much. You know what I'm saying? But no, oh, but they oh, can't wow. push you, bro. Yeah, they can't even get you off the ball in your dribble. Basically, effort. basically, so I think one thing to add, what he's basically asking is that with that strength, like how will, helpful is it? Really? What can you really produce with that? Yeah. Let's say you don't you give do a lot, let's bro. say you don't foul, you just win the ball. Like, you bro, don't were you not number nine? Were you not number nine? Yeah. You, so you should know what strength no, it, can do. It's it could help a lot, but mm-hmm. like it's not a, de- a determining factor. Like we didn't mind. I could just I already know which way to go, which way to beat you. Every you know what I mean? But are you able to do, do you back if yourself? If you read Vinny's mind, you're gonna lock him up. You back huh? yourself. If you read Vinny's mind, you're gonna lock him up. Yeah. It'll be okay. <laughs> easier. Easier. If I know he's going to the right, I'm gonna just slide to the right. Dog, the speed at the game where someone's dribbling, doing all those moves on you. He said he'll not... try. He said he'll Yeah, try. of course. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, no, my point is, dog, we know no, Vinny's no, no. better than Kendrick. Oh, that's yeah, not I the point. My point, my point is actually like, <laughs> dog, like it's yeah. almost trying to read your mind while you're doing all that. You already passed me. Uh-huh, it's uh-huh, over. Uh-huh. That's what I'm saying. I don't think it's that effective. So, what, guys, I'll take. I'm taking the strength. Oh shit! I'm taking the strength. Strong boy. Ten. Strong boy. Ten. Strong boy. Ten niggas strength. That's Ten crazy. Coconuts. Ten coconuts, bro. Ten. Victor Osimans, that's a lot of strength. Why him specifically? Because y'all made him a coconut and thought it was cool, and oh, it's all me, I did. Yes, you. you. Be specific. You. Y'all <laughs> Italians, okay, man. Got it. You personally <laughs> cancel <laughs> Italy. Cancel <laughs> Italy. Go be la chiesa. Don't tell you la torta. But no, uh, no. <laughs> I just said, where's the church? Not cut cake, but <laughs> hey, bro. Nah, I'm not. Nah, definitely the strength. Bro. I don't think y'all understand. If you were actually ten times stronger, how much that would help you. <laughs> <laughs> like we're acting like nothing's gonna happen. That's nuts. I don't know. So okay. I can just walk in front of you. It's over. I don't know. No, no, no. no. It's fair 10? because I think what imagine that has pick to up be, Thursday ten times stronger. That's what I got you. One thing that has been clarified for me as well is just the fact that like okay, it's not going to be a foul. Like I'm not yeah, going like, to bulldoze. Every time, I, every time I hit somebody, they're gonna go flying. Yeah. Like, but what, imagine you make a good tackle on the ball, which is clean. But you're, and now the player goes flying. Racially though, racially. Though, <laughs> nah, the commentary gonna be nuts. It will be nuts, and also the commentary is scary. Fou- more fouls on you. Yeah. It's, 
Facts. Oh, and then when you get hit, it's not a foul. Yeah. It's like LeBron syndrome. Yeah. yeah. Or if somebody kick you in the leg, you, yeah. like it's <laughs> nothing that happened. So, but yeah. then you also don't even I'm have to mind. go down, but you're 10 yes. times stronger. You didn't answer. I did. What'd you say? Mind. Bro, I'm reading minds. What is Josh? Uh, I mean, initially, definitely reading minds. What are y'all doing with that? Because I want to hear the three separate sure, mind sure. reading answers. I got you. So if you want to actually be a <laughs> bit technical, a bit tactical, if you know press triggers, you know what's going to cause the team to move. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like, I, also, I know if yeah. I send the ball this way, the team's going to move this way. Yeah. And so you can move the ball in another way to pick out Facts. pockets. Facts. If you're doing the one-on-one, -on -one, yes, I'm not catching up to Vinny, bro. But if I know he's going to push the ball, I'll foul yeah. him if I have to foul him. I'm just one, yeah. Also, you know, one. if I can read your mind, I know previous times in previous games where you've made errors that you're insecure about. And I'll just remind you of that <laughs> as I'm running back. That's good. You know what's really good is penalties, too. Yeah. That's where it's like, yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah. No, 10 yeah. strength. 10 That's strong. crazy, bro. What penalty is useless. No, I'm talking about reading yeah, my penalty. Had it, had it. Oh, yeah. Nah, the shot power. We didn't even talk about shot power. That's true, that's true. And imagine I can keep it down. It's over. Imagine that's I true. can keep it down. 10 Fede Valverde. What? Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's that's no. crazy, 10 bro. Adrianos. 10 Adrianos. 10 Roberto Carlos. Right. 10 goals a game. Okay, okay, okay. okay. <laughs> right? <laughs> Would you rather... Okay. Would you rather play alongside your favorite football legend or be coached by them? Ooh, that's a great question. I, I like that question. Do more of these, bro. That's really Some good. Because nice like Ronaldo, <laughs> being coached by Zidane versus playing with Zidane type yeah. of thing. That's really dope. I, so I would... My one of my favorite legend is Drogba. Yeah. I would definitely rather be coached by him because I can imagine him being his teammate is extremely stressful. Yeah. <laughs> like, if, I'm playing on a wing, if I'm playing on the wing and I'm trying to give that man a, <laughs> trying to give that man proper service and it's not going well... You better like, go straight to his He's forehead, in your face. Like, yeah. Yeah, he's a on? very passionate guy. Yeah. So yeah. in the locker room, Room, like it's it's high pressure. You don't think coach him coaching you would be even. I feel like him like as an older man mm -hmm. is probably more tamed. Yeah, like he's yeah. he's still strict and like once sure. you know, very yeah. regimented. But like he'll be like, all right, you know. I'm not gonna lie. He'll teach you like a son, kind of like mm -hmm. stern yeah, yeah. but loving. It's a great conversation because like those moments as a coach, as you're saying, like yeah. the inspiration that mm -hmm. someone could give you if you're on their good side. Right? Yeah, like, saying coach is good side. It'll be beautiful. But at the same time, if you're running along, your favorite player give you a ball. Ooh, <laughs> ball <laughs> it. It's over. What? He can't yeah. celebrate in the corner. He's crying. Yeah, I'm crying. Tears. I'm trying to, I see right now. Bro, I'm trying to bro, play bro. with Ronaldo. I'm bro. trying to play with Ronaldo, bro. Just that's a service. Bro. Just service into the box. I got you. I'm trying to play with the Marcelo thing with him. Yeah. Absolutely. What? Bro. I'm playing with Ronaldo. That's how bro. the Brazilian sure. team feels about Neymar. Neymar. Yeah. yeah. True. Openly, too. Like, Open, Vinny is like, oh, bro, you changed my life. Like, Rodrigo, too, talking about Santos shit. His teammates got him. his Tied it on him. <laughs> oh, uh, Rodrigo De Paul. Yeah. Nah, that's true, bro. That nigga munch. <laughs> <laughs> that nigga munch. Hey, World Cup winner. World Cup munch for sure. Hey, wow. Nah, dude. Hey, you got the bro. trophy. I can't say shit. Nah, what would you Still do? Munch, what would you do? Yeah. That's it. Depends. It's both depends. Beautiful nah, it's moments. Beautiful. Like, bro, Ronaldo and Zidane. Imagine a pass, a pump, volley it in. Imagine he sees you do that from the sideline. He's just happy. Yeah, yeah. Like, yeah. My yeah. favorite football legend, legend, mm -hmm. like, so legend, I guess, is Seedorf. Mm. Strong guy. One of the most underrated players of all yeah. time, too. He was a he was a good coach from Milan. He was, when he did wasn't he coach y'all? He, he he wasn't given the last time we pl ever played Champions League. 13, 14. Yeah. He was a oh. good coach. He wasn't given enough time. Um, Interesting. I think I'd rather play with him, though. Yeah. I think I'd rather so play with him. Everywhere. Boys, yeah. everywhere, bro. Because especially in the midfield, if there's a time somebody kicks you, you're going to kick the other person. Bro. Like, yo, don't. Yeah. Bro, he lit. <laughs> yeah. Nah, bro. Imagine yeah. the game's going. He's like, yo, we got to get this. Y'all come back. Yo. Remember the Manhattan FC game we won? Yeah. Imagine our legends came back. playing with us. Yeah. I want them coach. Yeah. Yeah. I'd rather them play. <laughs> Sedorf. Nah. I try to play like Sedorf. Hmm. Um, is this chat GPT by the way? Yeah, sponsor yeah, us. Yeah, facts. <laughs> and last one, last one, dead ass, too. Chat GPT sponsor, yeah, Gen AI. What's the name of their brand or company? Sponsor us, nigga. <laughs> what? What are we gonna sell? What do you mean? They're trying to get everyone to use this for everything, bro. Yeah. Come on. Yeah. They, you think they don't want to take over soccer with AI shit? Fuck That's out of here, nigga. That's fair. That's true. Yo, Premier League refs, use ch chat GPT for some of your fucking decisions. <laughs> wow, y'all need it. <laughs> Would you rather? Play for your favorite club team for one season or represent your country in the World Cup, but just for the group stages. Wow. Can I ask what happens in my one season and in my group stage? No. Okay. 
I'm just asking you, like, because <laughs> yeah, no, you, you know what I mean. No, no, of course, but I mean, like, if I win the champion, if I win the trouble, I might take. You don't know. You have to. Pick. Right, so oh, you don't know so what's so gonna talk happen. Through okay. it, talk through it. For me, the first thing I'm thinking about is I ball out in the in the group stage, and then I start playing for them, and they go to knockout stages, and I, that's all I did. No, the team get leads the group stages. Yeah. No, no, no. Oh, you're saying? Oh, so we're shit. Doesn't mean shit. It could be if you get four points and get knocked out. Like, if, if you're in the World Cup and you get knocked out in the group stage, you're gonna feel like shit. No, of course, yeah. But so that's it's what a I'm shitty. It's a shitty World Cup, and it's a unknown club but, season. But for instance, Haiti's never been to the World Cup. If you get to be on the one team that's ever made it, that's a pretty big step, bro. Yes. Would that like for you, yeah. right? Yes. That's what I'm saying. So it depends. I don't know why that's so funny. <laughs> <laughs> it's a shitty group stage. <laughs> you get it knocked out. It is. Knocked oh, out. But I'm said, saying it depends nah, on your nationality. Nah, I'm I'm on, I'm on it. I'm so for US, could, it could be like it, you know the you know yeah, and you could have a trash club. So like, but the thing that's established is the fact you're only playing three games for your country, <laughs> and you lost at least what two. The question is essentially, do you value playing three games for your country or over one. playing twenty games for your favorite club? Or do I want to lose two games with my international team? That's the question. Or you know, maybe you draw all three. I would, yeah. I would want, I would want to play on an international scale because it's more eyes, um, and more like it means more because like my people actually like are supporting the yeah. fuck out of me, like supporting two losses or what three draws. It doesn't sure. matter. Or a win and two losses. You Either technically way, could like, get four mob into the game, Yeah, they're, like they part of us. It could even be two wins actually, and you just like and then there is a there right. is a six six that six is. zero that's happening permutation. Yeah. I know. I'm just you know trying to figure out what's going on. So, based on my nationalities, I would take the one season with Real Madrid, for sure. What are your nationalities? Oh, I'm American and Spanish. So I think group stage, just group stage, is not a good achievement for either of those countries, and it wouldn't be historic or anything. So mm -hmm. for me, I'm taking the Real Madrid. You'd rather have the experience of uh, yeah, got you. Yeah, but it's also mad funny. It's like you're a Real Madrid player who's American, but you're just not on the national team. <laughs> mm. it just wasn't a World Cup year. True. Funny. True. Man. Is it, man? Nah, man. Season, that's fire, dog. Nah, season's cool. I mean, the World Cup's in absolutely incredible too. That's a different type of energy. Mm. But three games, well, nah, man. I don't know the stories. It's about what you'd rather. What What would you rather tell your kids? You have a lot more to tell them about the season. True. Yeah, but like, yeah, it's just local local lore. Yeah, I think it's a bit more than local lore. I was I'm playing, I'm playing. <laughs> like the world's biggest sport, biggest son. club. Like, mm. the son. <laughs> the I played local in the lore. Saudi World Cup. Son. Man, playing yeah, in the yeah, Saudi yeah. World Cup. Nice. Did you? It's nice. No. I think nice. I won the trouble. Fuck out of here. Like, <laughs> yeah, sure, sure. No, but yeah, I mean, in general, obviously representing your country, even yeah. players will say it hits more than yeah. playing for Yeah, of course, of course. Thing. Guys, does Mbappe have a signature celebration? Yeah. It is what? The arm cross thing, right? Is that good enough? Yes. All right. If he, Can we do fits? Yeah. <laughs> if he keeps it up. <laughs> is that good enough? Is it he, good enough? he actually doesn't, dick, bro. He he like, doesn't actually like France. He doesn't like PSG. No, no, I was just thinking. I feel like he should All have right. a better celebration. It changes, um, too. The CU, like, took time to make, so. Yeah. I think Jude's celebration is cool. Like, it's, like... It's, it's cool because he scores like, every like, game, though. Like, like, no, but the photo is fire. The photo is so fire. Was the, so was the... It's not as cool. Like, Jude, like Jude is beating him off celebration. I would say yeah. the one where he, you know, gives the salute. The salute's cool. The salute's yeah, yeah, but he be smiling while he does it, so yeah. it's not as iconic. But with the knee slide, it's all right. I disagree. Nah, when he does the knee slide, he does, yep, salute. <laughs> Off you, boys. That's what he did to Milan. <laughs> I just don't think the camera the camera people haven't figured out oh, how to get it. I don't, it might not be his fault. That's just funny. the fault. I haven't, no, it's like, your fault. It's me? Nobody else's fault. Yeah, I'm not the one. Stuff has like random like little Mbappe digs. <laughs> That's He's not fly enough. You know, like a celebration. His dude always has like 250 PSG goals at 24. Of it's because he's speaking a Milan. Of, Mbappe is a Milan fan and he's not. Oh, because they just cook them niggas. That's why. He's speaking, a Milan fan. From we knew that yeah. happened. Yeah. Speaking of France. Speaking of French. Speaking of equipe. Speaking of fashion. Yes, sir. Um, five Aside Podcast. Flies podcast out here. You don't know. What we got on today? Josh, let's we'll start with you. So and over here, got on Daily Paper. I got this from the London flagship store. We went to London last year. Yes, sir. Shout out them. Got another London brand, Cortez. London. Cortez, however you want to say it, on the sweatpants as well. Got forces on the feet. <laughs> I'm saying hopefully we can make a trip out there next year. Facts. Champions League final. For the yeah, Wembley Champions League Champions final. Are the yeah. Euros this summer? Yeah, in Germany. In the Paris Olympics. Hmm. 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 UEFA. <laughs> Let's post <laughs> the <some> buggers. <laughs> yeah. 
this summer is uh, Euros. Yeah, Copa Germany. America as well. And Copa America in the US. We're Copa America this summer here? Yeah. We're stuck. Bro, we've been talking we're about it. We're here, we're here. We're now we're stuck. I don't yeah, I okay, assume so. they're at the same time more or less. Hopefully Italy. I'm out to the Olympics again. though. You said hopefully Italy doesn't qualify? Yeah. For the Euros? Mm -hmm. Bro, I don't know what's gonna happen to your country if y'all miss that. Can we we're a basketball yeah. nation. We're a basketball nation. <laughs> <laughs> All right. He's sick. All right, so I'm wearing today. Um, I got on the blue, the great designed Air Jordan One mids. I've talked about him before, but he's an artist who does a lot of dope album covers and uh, graffiti. Zara pants on and a really cool shirt here. This is called uh, Offset Tears. So Offset collabs with uh, Denim Tears, which is a maybe one of the most hyped streetwear brands right now mm -hmm. for his album merch, and it came in like a fire ass box and a uh, hard copy of the album as well. Shout out Offset for a very successful album. You know I gotta show the back though too. You know what I'm saying? Offset tears, you get me. So yeah, shout out Offset and uh, cotton on your chest. Come on, bro. Cotton on your chest. Shout out Takeoff. <laughs> yeah, RIP Takeoff. I was definitely gonna say that, and just shout out also Offset for you know having a successful solo career and also continuing to venture into fashion. He was even our judge right. on a fashion show called The Hype on HBO. Really good show. Cap. So yeah, shout out Offset. Word. You said Cap. Um, what I got on today <laughs> is uh. Cool day in New York. Palace on <laughs> Palace on the pants. Dog swarm. Um t shirt from Pali Palafochi. Mm, Palafochi. Palafochi. I believe that's how you pronounce Pala, it. Pala. Um up and coming brand from Minneapolis. Um they sent us some gear. Beautiful. Very beautiful t shirt. Elevated design. Texturized. Oh, Texture. This is textured right here, bro. Peep the collar. Collar's everything. Thick collar. Come on. We need more thick collared t-shirts. Because the collar be folding. Mm. So, appreciate y'all. Quality we'll Hold this shirts, up, quality too. Quality people. Um, need y'all to see this, bro. Check them out. And the texture. The texture on the print is brilliant, bro. Well, it's a quality. Elevate team. your design, bro. Facts. We love the light blue. Absolutely. Blue. Fits the Champions League vibe with it, too. Le bleu. Yes, sir. Le bleu. Um, hi, guys. Seb. Um, Lumi Nanch. Luminense. Eu tenho um cachorro. Jogar bonito. <laughs> Tudo bem? Tudo bem? Obrigado. <laughs> Obrigado. Obrigada. Para favor. <laughs> That's the time. Futebol. É fi futebol. Futebol. Futebol no Rio de Janeiro. I can't wait. I can't wait. Got to be more careful. <laughs> I can't wait. It's live before. I know it's going to be the last Yo, thing. You never know. Hell no. Nah. You never know what nigga's going to yeah, cross the line. Nah. <laughs> He's small before. He got too happy to say it. Nigga, bro. He got so happy. So excited. Uh, I can't wait to listen to the audio. Were they the ones with the rice powder? Is that Fluminense? Oh my God. <laughs> <laughs> I'm dead ass though. I think it is. It, it was. It could have been. They got their first. God. Copa Libertadores, bro. That's History. from us, bro. That's the crazy thing is actually nice facts. But Seb, finish off the outfit. <laughs> um, yeah, no. New Pumas. Yes. Yeah. Suede. Um, suede, green, and tan, and then uh, yeah, gray pants. I love it. Thrifty. All right, y'all. Episode forty-three. Hmm. That's it. That's the five. Sub. Oh, okay. No, you're good. All right. So thank you all for joining us on another audio video journey. That was episode 43 of the Five Aside podcast. We'll talk to y'all very soon. Yeah. Peace. Peace. Yeah. Five's up, five down. Yeah, 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 yeah.